Nipigie makofi. Praise God church. Bwana asifiwe kanisa. Praise God again. Bwana asifiwe tena. Um, my name is Goodness Mwendwa. Kwa jina ni Mwendwa Goodness. Um, first born to the speaker this afternoon. Oh, kifungwa mimba wa mnenaji wa jioni ya leo. And uh, this has been my church for quite some time. Na hili limekuwa ni kanisa langu kwa muda. I just cleared my form 4. Ah, uh, nilimaliza tu kidato cha 4. I really trust God for results because he has brought me this far and I believe that he is not yet done. Na kwa sababu Mungu amenileta ubali huu na gojea lizoti zangu na najua hajamaliza na mimi. So um what I can share this afternoon is a verse from Jeremiah chapter 17. Habari naweza shiriki nanyi ni kutoka katika kitabu cha Jeremiah 17 verse 5. Mstari wake wa 5. It has been my verse since I began my form 4 in January till na, now. Na imekuwa ni fungu langu wakati nilianza kitacho cha ina kumwazi wa kwanza hadi sasa. And it talks about those who trust in God. That's those who trust in God, they are like this tree planted by the riverside. Na inasema ni kama abaya na mtumaini ibuana ni kama mtu rio pandu wa karibu ya mto. And it bears fruit in all seasons. Na huu mtu unapata matuda kila wakati. And even in harsh times, it does not despair. Na hata wakati wa maisha magumu ni kwamba hivi moyo. And it lacks no good thing. Na ni kwamba huu mtu haukosi kitu chema. So I can say that since January, I have trusted this God. Kwa hivyo naiza sema kwanzia mwezi wa kwanza ni memtumainia huyu mungu. And indeed, I saw him during my exams. Na ni kwa hakika ni limona wakati wa mtihani wangu. And as it said, you don't give your testimony until it is done. Na kwa sababu tunabu usitoe ushuda wakati tu yusha marizika. After the results, I believe I will have a testimony to share. Na baada matokeo ni kwamba nitakuwa na ushuda wakushiriki. And yeah, be blessed. Na mubarikiwe sana. So goodness will not sit because... I wanted her to welcome the speaker because the speaker is part of her family. But allow me to say this. Allow me to say this. We have notebooks that are on sale. Do not, do not struggle to get a place to write. And as you buy uh, the notebooks, you shall be supporting the ICC. We also have other merchandise that is out there. We also have Tigoni Milk. Sponsors of this great conference. About the Tigoni milk, I can uh, vouch for this milk because the owners are members of this church. All their products of this church. They have even gone through the Father's vision. So he is not going to give us chemicals. Neither will he put water. Or those other things. So, tunaza kuamua this week Tigoni milk, Tigoni milk, Tigoni milk, chai, chai Tigoni, maziwa Tigoni, mtoto wakilia, maziwa ni Tigoni. And that will be a good thing. So, right about now, I want to go back to goodness. I invite, uh, I don't know how you're going to do this, they are all here, so you will invite whoever you want to come first. It feels, it, it feels good that your, your daughter can invite you to come and do this. And we will see it happening more often. Great, great, great. So goodness, up to you. Uh, so at this point, I would like to invite the Mwenda's family. Kwa hivyo wakati unataka kuwaita jamii ya Mwendo. from the last born. This Ata. is our last born. She Ntanza is kwa kiti damiba wetu. She's gift mine kende muenda. Anaitua gift muendwa. 
She is Precious Mukami Mwenda. Yeye ni Precious Mwenda. Our speaker, my mom, our wife. Mnena. Mnena jiwetu hapa ni mama yako. Kay Mwenda. Anaitwa Mwenda. And my dad and her husband, Humphrey Murugu Mwenda. Naye baba yangu pia anaitwa Mwenda Humphrey. And this point I'll give my dad and my the mic to just say one thing. Nitampatia babangu na ili aseme kitu. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Uh, we are glad to be here. Tunafurahi kuwa hapa. We thank God that uh, he has given us a chance to be with you people today. Na nashukuru Mungu ametupatia fursa ya kuwa nanyi leo. And my beautiful girl here is mm. a speaker. Naye huyu mpendwa wangu ndiye atakuwa anatunenea. Mm, we celebrated our 20, 20 years in marriage this year. Na tulisherekea miaka 20 ya ndoa mwaka huu. And we thank God. Na tunashukuru Mungu. Um, I think I can uh, give my goodness to pray for the speaker na atampatia goodness aombe mnenaji um so let's believe and pray wacha tuombe our dear everlasting father we come before your presence this afternoon baba we yetu tuakuja mbele zako adhuri jema we are so grateful for this chance you've given unto us tunashukuru kwa fursa hii umetupatia and as mom speaks this afternoon na mamangu anapoenda kunena adhuri hii may you use her as your vessel my god mtumie kama chombo chako bwana and may you speak through her to your people na umnene watu wako kupitia yeye for this is a prayer of faith you do pray trusting in jesus name na hiyo tunaomba katika jina la yesu amen amen Thank you and God bless you clap for them. Bwana wabariki wapigie makofi. Clap for them. Thank you. Thank you goodness. The Bible says train up a child in the ways he should go. Biblia inasema mle mtoto kwa jia ambayo atapitia. And when he grows up will not depart from the same. Na kikomoa hataondoka katika zile jia. Amen. Amina. I'm humbled to stand before you this afternoon. Nafurahia kusimama mbele zenu wa dhuhuri hii. Allow me to appreciate mom and dad, Pastor Halis and Bishop Jimmy Kimani. Nishukuru kwa niruhusini mshukuru mchunga Bishop wetu na mom Alis. Thank you for this opportunity you have given and to me to minister to God's people. Asante kwa fursa hii umenipa na ili niwanene watu wa Mungu. I feel so much humbled. Nasikia kwamba nimenyenyekea. And I take it to be an open door. Uh, uh, one of the on doors that are on the open the open heavens amen na, na, na ni moja ya bingu zilizo funguka amen amina uh, with me i came with uh, two friends ka pamoja nami nilikuja na marafiki wawili i uh, request uh, Sami and paul to stand up and wave god's people nikiwaulisa kina paul wasimame na wapunge mkono them, appreciate them wapigie makofi na furahia let them wave you at the moment you know them as we continue Tunapo so when i was invited to share with you this afternoon i was given a very broad topic that is mental health nikapewa kichwa cha ujube ni kwamba ni afya ya kiakili mental health expand on that at the same time talk of depression and substance abuse together with anxiety uh, hayo hali ya afya ya kiakili inahusia mambo mengi Uh, it is broad but by the help of God I'm going to summarize it. Nipana sana lakini kwa kupea kwa uwezo wa Mungu kwamba nitaweza kuimalizia vizuri. And as we sit here this afternoon brethren. Na tunapoketi hapa adhuhuri wapendwa. You are Christ bride. Kwamba nyinyi ni bia harusi wa Bwana. You are here to be equipped with the knowledge. Kumko hapa kuwezeshwa pa kwa ufahamu. So that even as we go outside you are going to offer solutions to God's people. Ili tunapotoka tutakuwa wasuluhu kwa watu wa Mungu. Yeah, we are all aware of what is happening especially in our country Kenya today. Tunafahamu ni nini kinaendelea hapa Kenya. There are a lot of people the devil is using people to kill themselves. Ni kwamba shetani anatumia watu kujiua. And not only killing themselves but also they are killing a whole family. Na si kujiua tu lakini wanaua mpaka jamii nzima. So again I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you mama and dad for giving us an opportunity to share as a family. Kwa hivyo nashukuru kwa fursa hii ambayo tunaenda kushiriki kama jamii. So that when we get this information you are going to offer solutions to the community. Kwa hivyo tukipata ujube huu tutakuwa wa wasuruhu kwa jamii starting right with our own nuclear families kuanzia katika familia zetu za hapa karibu mental illness or mental disorders are not outside there mawazo ama shida za kiakili haziko mpaka huko nje they are right even in the church ziko nje na pia ziko hapa kanisani so very fast allow me we 
can go to the topic of the day. Kwa hivyo niruhusu twende katika kichwa cha ujumbe wa leo. We are going to expand on mental health. Tunaenda kuangalia hali ya afya ya kiakili. And we will start by defining what health is. Na tutaanza kuangalia afya ni nini. So according to World Health Organization, kulingana na ile shirika la World Health, World health Organization, health is defined as complete physical, mental and social well-being. Ni kwamba afya ni ile hali ya imekamilika ya kimwili na kimawazo and not merely absence of a disease. Na sio kusokosekana tu kwa maradhi. Ah uh, Many times when you talk about a health in a layman's language wakati mwingi wakati tunanenea kuhusu afya kwa lugha ya kawaida we think of physical health or a physical wellness alone tunafikiria tu ni ile hali ya afya ya kimwili ya kuonekana when somebody says I'm, he- i'm physically fit or i'm healthy you only think of when you don't have any disease in your system you feel you are healthy wakati mtu anasema ana afya anaonekana tu ni kwamba hana ugonjwa wowote mwilini But this afternoon allow me to say this. Lakini jioni hii niruhusu niseme hili. Health comprises of three factors. Ni kwamba afya inahusia vitu vitu vitatu. It involves mental well-being. Ah uh, inahusiana na hali ya mawazo. Physical well-being. Ah uh, hali ya uzima wa kuonekana kwa mwili. And social well-being. Na pia hali njema ya mwingiliano wa kijamii. I thank God for this church. Nashukuru Mungu kwa kanisa hili. When it comes to social well-being, hali ikifikia ni wakati wa afya mwingiliano wa kijamii. This is well expounded on. Hii ni kweli imefafanuliwa vizuri. When it comes to physical well-being, ikifikia ni katika hali ya afya mwili kuonekana. Again through Dr. Kuria she has really expounded on this and the factors that can help promote physical well-being. Ni kwamba daktari wetu ataalituelezea saidi zile vitu zinaweza fanya tukue na afya nzuri. Ways that you can practice or exercise to do away with the physical conditions like diabetes, hypertension, Hali ya baza tuna, cancers. Mambo ambayo tunaweza fanya na zoezi na ili tuweze kufukuza aina tofauti ya maradhi mwilini. So today allow us to venture on mental illness. Kwa hivyo leo niruhusu tuingie katika hali ya afya ya kimawazo. Let's discuss the issues concerning mental wellness. Na tunene maneno kuhusu afya ya mawazo. So that even as we walk as we sit or as we sleep you know that this is what can promote my mental well-being. Ili tujue tunapotebea tunapoketi tujue hiki kinaweza changia katika hali yangu jema ya mawazo. Again na WHO that is World Health Organization. Ah uh, kwa tena lile shirika la WHO is defining mental health as a state of well-being. Inafafanua kwamba hali ya mawazo ya afya ya kimawazo where an individual is able to discover your own abilities to contribute to the community. Ni hali wakati mtu anaweza kutambua uwezo wake wa kuchangia katika ubora wa jamii ability to cope with normal stresses in life na hali ama uwezo wa kukubana na mambo ambayo yanaleta mawazo msogo wa mawazo and ability to contribute positively and fruitfully in the community na hali ya kuchangia kichanya katika hali ya jamii so when you are able to realize your potential or your ability to cope with the normal stresses of life kwa hivyo ukiweza kubaini uwezo wako wa kukubana bana na mambo ya msongo wa mawazo and you are able to contribute to the community in a positive way na unaweza kuchangia katika jamii kwa jia chanya you are able to contribute to your own life in a positive way na pia unaweza kuchangia katika maisha yako kwa jia chanya you work to earn your own living na unaweza kuwa na hali yako ya kujimundu then you can comfortably say that your mental health is okay na unaweza sema hali yako ya kimawazo iko sawa and in absence of this na pasipo haya If you are not able to cope with the normal stresses of life kama huwezi kukubana na msongo wa mawazo ya maisha if you are not able to work and earn your own living na huwezi fanya kazi na kwa jimundu kimaisha if you are not able to contribute positively and in a fruitful manner to the development of the society na kama huwezi kusangia katika kuchangia katika jamii kwa mambo ambayo ni ya kuendeleza Then that one is referred to as mental illness. Kwa hiyo hiyo inabainika kama hali ya kuhojeka kimawazo. So our focus this afternoon let us realize what are the causes of mental illness. Kwa hivyo shabaha yetu jioni ya leo ni kuangalia ni nini kinachangia hali hiyo ya mawazo. So that we can be able to work towards preventing it. Na ili tufanye kazi tukiendelea kujikinga nayo. They say 
prevention is better than cure. Wanasema kuzuilia ni bora kuliko kutibu. Kwa hivyo when each one of us participates actively in prevention of mental illness. Kwa hivyo kila mmoja wetu akifanyika kuyazuia magonjwa ya mawazo. At the end of it you are going to have health families, health church, health community and a growing country. Kwa mwisho wa siku tutakuwa na jamii bora na pia itakuwa na nchi yenye afya. Amen. Amina. Uh, we know very well tunajua vizuri as ambassadors of Christ sisi kama ambassadors about wa Kristo we are hankered in the word of god ni kwamba sisi tumeshika nanga katika neno la Mungu and we know how to stand firm in faith na tunajua jinsi ya kusimama imara kwa imani confess the word of god na kukulikiri neno la Mungu and by faith god delivers you from this situation na kwa imani Mungu anatukomboa katika hali hizi but let us not be ignorant because if you are not affected by this problem You, if you are not infected by the problem you are affected because of the significant others lakini tusikae kwa hali ya kutojua kwa sababu iwapo hili jambo halijakuguza moja kwa moja utaguzwa kwa njia nyingine kwa sababu ya watu walio karibu nawe if your community is like my community kama jamii yako ni kama jamii yangu i give you a second to reflect back where you come from nitakupatia fursa utafakari mahali umetoka reflect that nearby market please where you come from na utafakari jamii mahali unatoka pale sokoni the village you come from kijiji mahali unatoka you will identify one or two people who are mentally sick utaona mtu mmoja au wawili ambao wamegojeka kimawazo in our very families where we come from katika jamii zetu mahali tunatoka there are stress us all the time kuna wa, kuna mambo ya msongo kila wakati sisi wenyewe are we able to cope with those stresses sisi wenyewe tunaweza kupambana na ile hali ya msongo so when we realize that we are going to be able to grow or to walk knowing this is these are stresses this is how i will be able to copy them na tukiendelea na tukijua hadi yanaleta msongo wa mawazo tutabaini njia ya kubabana nayo yes in the book of psalms 34 verse 19 katika kitabu cha zaburi 34 mstari wa 19 the bible says men are the afflictions of the righteous biblia inasema mateso ni mengi ya wenye haki but the lord promises he is able to deliver us out of them all lakini bwana anaahidi kwamba atawakomboa dhidi yao yote so for us we have a hunger where we are leaning kwa hivyo sisi tunananga mahali tunaegemea but this afternoon let us get as much uh, information as possible so that we can solve problems outside there. Lakini nigeoba dhuhuri hii tupate ufahamu zaidi na ili tukapata kuwa suluhu huko nje. For the parents in the house. Kwa wazazi walio jengoni. God has given us an opportunity. Mungu ametupa na fursa. To nurture our children or our family to make it an, a therapeutic environment. Na kuiwili tuweze kuwalea watoto wetu na jamii zetu wakuwe na katika hali jema. So that they grow up to ba, to ten mental health na ili wakuwe na wakuwe na afya jema ya kimawazo how will they acquire this mental health je watapata aje hii hali ya afya ya kimawazo by ensuring them we equip them with the necessary factors or necessary skills na kuhakikisha kwamba tuwapatia kiufundi kinachohitajika that will make them cope with the trends that are there in the changing world na kuwawezesha na ili waweze kupambana na mambo yanayobadilika ulimwenguni for example kwa mfano factors that affect mental health mambo ambayo yanaadhiri hali ya afya ya mawazo one of them is self esteem ya kwanza ni ile mambo ya kujidhamini and feeling loved na kujihisi kwamba unapendwa as parents we need to cultivate an environment whereby we still Uh, the right attitude in our children kama wazazi tunafaa tu, tufanye kuna ile tabia ndani ya watoto wetu they grow up when they have self value na ili wakue wakiwa na ile hali ya kujidhamini self value where by they are able to to have positive self image na mahali wataweza kujidhamini hivi kwamba wanaonekana wanapendeka and the sense of self worth na waone kwamba wao ni wadhamana when they grow up in an environment where they feel loved wakikua katika hali ambayo wanahisi wamependwa they will be able to to also maintain a good positive self esteem ni kwamba watakuwa na ile hali ya kujipenda wenyewe they will feel comfortable safe and secure watahisi kwamba wako sawa 
kufahama and you be able to communicate and develop uh, healthy relationships na wataweza kujisema ama kuwa na mwingiliano mzuri na watu they also be able to develop self confidence kwa hivyo pia watakuwa na ile hali ya ujasiri ya kidani and this will can cultivate positive attitude leading to happy and productive life na watakuwa na hali jema ya mawazo na watakuwa watu wa ku wa, wa kuchangia vizuri katika maisha. But what is happening allow me to say this? Lakini tena kinatendeka na uniruhusu niseme. Ngona the days when parents were taking their roles very seriously. Eh, zimepita zile siku ambao wazazi walikuwa wanachukulia majimu yao kwa kumaanisha. And as dispensation has come. Na imefika awamu ingine. When children are in school and their parents are also in school. Wakati wazazi wako shule na watoto wako shule. Are we together? Je, tuko pamoja? Tuko pamoja. Are we together? In the morning my daughter was telling me mom you talk very fast so asubui, when you go to teach make sure you move with the people. Uh, asubuhi binti yangu akaniambia mama unanena kwa haraka sana. Unapofunza edanisha na watu. Tuko pamoja. Tuko pamoja. Are we together? Are we, tuko pamoja. Tafadhali if I'm very fast stop me. Iwapo e, ninaenda kwa upesi nisimamishe. Sasa nasema hivi. This a, this is a time or a period which is very challenging. Tunasema kwamba hii ni awamu ambayo inachanga moto sana. Parents are in school, children are in school. Wazazi wako shule na pia watoto wako shuleni. You become stranger in your own house. Mnakuwa kama wageni katika boma yenu. Yet you expecting to be a mentor to this child. Ili hali unafaa kwa mkufunzi kwa huyu mtoto. We end up mentoring ourselves and equipping them with life skills hatimaye kwamba tunawalea wale wachunga nyumba zetu kwa hali zingine za kiufudi and then leaving our children na, with na, nobody to attend to na kisha tunawaacha watoto wetu bila mtu akuwashughulikia that is one challenge that we are having hiyo ni changamoto moja tunayo when it comes to uh, the current parenting again tukifikia katika hali ya uzazi wa siku hizi over protection is another big uh, challenge that is making our children not to learn life skills changamoto nyingine ni kwamba tunawalinda kupita kiasi watoto wetu over protection kwamba tunawalinda kupita kiasi when you were, when i was growing up wakati nilikuwa nakuwa i learned how to cook from my mother nikajifunza kupika kutokana na mamangu i learned how to make my root bend from my mother nikajifunza kutokana na mamangu jinsi ya kutengeneza kitanda i learned how to wash my own clothes from my mother na kisha kuosha nguo zangu nilifunzwa na mamangu oh the good values that my husband saw that can desire kuwa na such a wife na zile tabia ambazo mume wangu aliona katamani kuwa na mke kama huyu i learned huyu. them from no other person but my mother nilijifunza kutokana kana na mama yangu. So parents of today. Kwa hivyo wazazi wa siku hizi. Are we able to translate the same to our children? Je, tunaweza kupitisha haa kwa watoto wetu? Uh, I've seen something that we are equipping our house managers. Nimeona kwamba tunawawezesha wasichana wetu nyumbani. Instead of equipping our children. Badala ya kuwakuza watoto wetu. That is where our protection is coming in. Hiyo ndio hali ya kuwalinda kupita kiasi na ingilia. mtoto kwamba huyu ni mtoto anafuliwa nguo mm-hmm. huyu ni mtoto mm-hmm. anatandikiwa kitanda huyu ni mtoto anapikiwa chakula mpaka the child finishes form 4 hadi mtoto anamaliza kitato cha 4 bado akiwa mtoto wa mama na baba What are we doing to these children? Je, tunafanyia nini hao watoto wetu? We are denying them, we are not equipping them with life skills. Kwa hivyo hatuwapatii mambo ya kiufudi ya kimaisha. And when they go to secondary school? Lakini wakienda katika shule ya upili. Remember we said mental health is. Kubuka tulisema afya ya kimawazo ni its ability to cope with normal stressors. Ni kwamba ni uwezo wa kukubana na msongo wa mawazo. Ability to work. Ni kwamba ni uwezo wa kufanya kazi. And ability to con- contribute positively and fruitfully to the society. Na hali ya kuchangia katika jamii kwa jia ambazo ni chanya. So when you over protect your child, she will continue kilinda. with the education but at the end of the day she will only hand papers but will not be useful in the society. Kwa hivyo ukimlinda kupita kiasi mtoto wako, hatimaye atakuwa tu amepata makaratasi lakini hatakuwa maana katika jamii. And this is going to affect the coping mechanism. Na hii itaadhiri ile uwezo ya kukubana. Each individual coping mechanism varies. Kwa kila mtu hali yake ya kukubana na mambo ni tofauti. Depending on your personality. Kulingana na asili yako. So if this child is not maintained well to acquire the right character to acquire the right skills. Kwa hivyo kama huyu mtoto hajarelewa vizuri kupata tabia nzilizojema. A little pressure or 
small stressors will make them to get mental illness. Kwa hivyo akipata na msongo kidogo katika maisha ataingia gia katika hali ya kudhoofika afya kimaya kimawazo. And mental illness will come as a result of trying to take substances that will make them to continue. Na magonjwa ya kimawazo itaingiliana na mambo ya kutaka kutumia vitu kama dawa hivi. Have you realized there are some children when they go to secondary school because they have not been taught how to do their own cleaning? Ukiona watoto wengine wakienda shule ya pili kwa sababu hawajafunzwa hali yao ya usafi wenyewe. They pile clothes in their boxes at the, at the end of the week they start turning their blouses or their shirts upside down. Wanaweka guo zikiwa chafu katika saduku wiki ikiisha wanaanza kuzifaa kwa pande ya upili. Because washing to them kwa sababu kuosha nguo kwa That is the work of the house manager at home. Hiyo ni kazi ya msichana pale nyumbani. Are we together? Je, tuko pamoja? Let's help our children to cope with life. Wacha tuwasaidie watoto wetu wakubana na maisha. By ensuring them that we instill in them the right skills. Kwa kuhakikisha kwamba tumeweka zile hali za kiufundi ndani mwao. When they close the school a long period like this one. Wakifunga shule kwa uzamu kama hii. I feel very sad when I hear some parents saying, "Hold, what am I going to do with these children?" Naona wazazi wengine wanajiuliza, "Nitafanya nini na wao mtoto?" Pole kwetu sana wazazi. This is a golden opportunity God has given to you and me. Hii ni fursa ya kipekee ambayo Mungu amekupa wewe na mimi. For you to understand your child. Ili wewe ukaweze kumuelewa mtoto wako. And to equip them with the right values. Na kumuwezesha kwa tabia zilizo jema. Equip them with the right skills. Kumuwezesha kwa hali jema za kiufundi. That they are going to stand in times of storm. Na ili waweze kustahimili wakati wa dhoruba. Failure to this you are seeing children burning schools. Kando na hao utawaona wengine wakichoma shule. You are abusing drugs na pia wanatumia madawa uh, and this is not what we are praying for na hili sio lile jambo ambalo tunaomba we are praying to have health generation tunaomba tupate kizazi ambacho kina afya jema and the future leaders that can take this nation to the next level na viongozi wazuri ambao utaipeleka inchi katika hatua ingine so as a parent kwa hivyo kama mzazi create a therapeutic home environment ni kwamba utengeneza boma mzuri yenye hali nzuri yenye people can learn a lot it's a, it's a teaching environment boma ambao kwa ni kama hali ya kuwafunza so that the children can we can start promoting mental health right from the family level Nahi. Na ili tuweze kuwezesha ile hali ya afya kimawazo kuanzia katika jamii. Another factor contributing to mental health. Jabu, uh, sababu lingine ambayo inachangia katika hali ya afya ya mawazo. When there are family breakups. Ni wakati kuna familia zimevujika. These issues will never cease until because you're in this world, eh? Ah, mambo yatakuwa kwa sababu tuko bado katika ulimwengu huu. Separation, divorce or loss of a parent. Ni kwamba kutengana ama kumpoteza mzazi. Or a sibling. Ama mtu ambaye umezaliwa naye. This is a very painful experience. Hii ni hali ambayo ni chungu sana. And these bad factors I'm talking about, they are factors affecting mental health. Na ha, and mambo, the one affecting. Ah, ah mambo ambayo unanena ni kwamba ya na adhiri hali ya afya mawazo and something that is affecting can affect it positively or negatively na kitu ambacho kinaweza dhuru kinaweza dhuru kwa jia hasi ama jia chanya so if we take care of them and address them accordingly kwa hivyo tukiangalia mambo kwa uh, kwa uzuri we are going to promote mental health ni kwamba tutakuwa tunachangia katika hali ya afya ya mawazo if we don't address them effectively na kama mambo haya hatutayaangalia vizuri then we are going to cause mental to disorders tutaenda kuchangia katika hali ya mawazo ambayo yana maradhi so again i said we should not concentrate only with our nuclear family kwa hivyo tusiangalie tu katika familia zetu za hapa karibu by the grace of god we have come this far because we've known the truth and the truth that you are knowing is setting us free by day by day lakini kubali huu tumekuja kwa sababu tumejua ukweli na ukweli tukiubaini unatuweka huru kila wakati but you are here representing the bigger society na tuko hapa tuki kwa sababu tukiangalia jamii ambayo ni kuu sana i said we be ambassadors of Christ who can share at the one with people and also help messages with our people. Na nikasema kwamba sisi tukue mabarosi wa Yesu ambao tunaweza shiriki hata ujumbe wa Kristo na watu wengine. So when our neighbors, our friends or our relatives that you are with when they are experiencing this moment of separation, divorce, loss of parent or a sibling. Na kwa hivyo watu wetu wa karibu ama majirani wetu wakipatwa na mabokama haya kuachana ama ya 
kupoteza mmoja wao as a believer you have a solution for them wewe kama muumini unafaa kuwa suruhu kwa wao so this topic is very important so that you know this truth that you know today kwa hivyo hii jambo ni mzuri sana na ili ujue ukweli ambao utaubaini leo share it with our people outside there na ukaushiriki na watu wengine huko nje and if it happens and it's beyond your ability na kama hii kitu itatendeka na iko juu ya uweza wako referring is a strength ni kwamba una itakuwa ni hali ya muhimu ku refer you refer itakuwa, them itakuwa ni muhimu sana kuelekeza yes where they can get their assistance kuelekeza mahali wanaweza pata msaada difficult behaviors kuna hali abazo ama tabia abazo ni ngumu this is another factor that if we handle it well hii ni jambo jingine na tukichukulia vizuri it will end up promoting mental health e kwamba itachangia katika afya bora ya mawazo but if we don't address it effectively again na tusipoichangia vizuri it will contribute to mental illness Ita leta ma, maradhi katika mawazo. It is starts with abusive language at home. Inaanza katika lugha pale ama semi ka pale nyumbani. Children or teenagers they become aggressive. Ana watoto au kibarehe wanaanza kuwa nyabugdha. They become violent damaging property and even stealing. Na wanaanza kuharibu vitu na pia kuimba. They start lying. Na wengine wanaanza kusema uongo. And they also fail to meet expectations in school. Na saa zingine wanakosa kuhitimu pale shuleni. Or even at home. At, at pale nyumbani. But again what is happening with our parenting today? Lakini nini kinafanyika katika ulezi wetu? Gone are the days when parents and the teachers were disciplining children accordingly. Siku zimepita wakati tulikuwa tunawarudi watoto wazazi kwa walimu. Tundim the child and us a mistake instead of disciplining the child unampasa pasa tu namwambia mom daddy mom daddy usifanye hivyo. Siku hizi zi unaona mtoto akikosea haumrudi lakini unampembeleza tu. In schools when you are growing up tulikuwa tunakuwa pale shuleni ambao ni walika langu tulikuwa tunachapa kweli kweli Yes discipline was like that. The Tuli... teacher had the power to discipline the child. Mwalimu alikuwa na uwezo wa kumrudi mtoto. When you are disciplined in school, wakati ulikuwa unarudiwa pale you shuleni, you go home again the parent to discipline you. Ukirudi nyumbani mzazi anakurudi. But today what is happening? Lakini siku hizi nini kinatedeka? If a child does a mistake in school, mtoto wako akikosea pale shuleni, the first thing the father or the mother will do is to run to that school. Kitu ya kwanza baba na mama nafanya kukibia pale shuleni. In instead of even knowing what the mistake the child has done, baada ya kujua makosa gani mtoto na alitenda tunaanza kumlaumu yule mwalimu na unatenda hili mbele ya huu mtoto what are we expecting from the child je tunatarajia nini kwa mtoto this child is going to be more and more disobedient huyu mtoto atakuwa si wa kutii na mara tena wazazi wazazi listen to me nisikize you will prevent a teacher from using a cane unamzuia mwalimu kutumia kiboko to discipline your child kumrudi mtoto wako to equip your child with the right skills na kumwezesha mtoto wako the right discipline na tabia nzuri but when this child grows up na huu mtoto wa kibarehe you will not be able to stop the police officers uta hautaweza kumzuria askari from using a gun kutumia buduki tuko pamoja are we together are we together tuko pamoja they will use the gun because this child will become start breaking the laws kwa sababu mtoto ataanza kuvuja sheria they started with breaking the school rules walianza kwa kuvuja sheria shuleni you stopped the teacher from disciplining the child kwa mzuia mwalimu kumrudi mtoto you also decided not to discipline the child na wewe ukaamua hautamrudi mtoto because we have sent the parents kwa sababu wewe ni msazi asiwe kuepo i'm pursuing my bachelor's ni kwamba mimi nafuatilia shahada my child is in school mtoto wangu wako shuleni tunakutana jioni at home tunakutana jioni then You ask the house manager. Alafu unamuuliza yule msichana nyumbani. Have they done homework? Je, wamefanya homework? They came the right time. Walikuja wakati unaofaa? That's okay, wanalala. Kama ni sawa, wanaenda kula. So you are a stranger to your child at home. Kwa hivyo wewe ni mgeni kwa mtoto wako nyumbani. And in school where the teacher want to instill discipline that you have not instilled to this child. Na pale shuleni wakati alitaka awekwe tabia nzuri. You go there using all sorts of words. Na unaenda pale shuleni ukitumia maneno ya aina so zote. So my fellow parents. Kwa hivyo wazazi wenzangu. Let's be practical parents. Wacha tukue wazazi wenye kufanya. Let us go back to those days where our mothers were bringing us well. Na tu- ndrudi zile siku 
ambao wazazi wetu walikuwa natulea vizuri. Let us not say that laws are there that children are not supposed to be beaten. Tusiseme ati kwamba kuna sheria watoto wasichapwe. I'm speaking as a living testimony. Mimi ninanena kama shahidi. In school where my children had. Shuleni wa mahali watoto wangu wapo. I told the teachers there that the mistake you'll do. Nikamwambia mwalimu pale ile makosa utafanya. Is my daughter or or is it anything afanye makosa? Yaani my daughter if she does a mistake. Wakati binti yangu atafanya makosa pale. Before you call me. Kabla unipigie simu. Explain the child. Akukweba umrudi mtoto kwanza. And, and as you call me, call me to tell me my child did A B C D. Na unaponipigia unipigie uniambie mtoto wangu alifanya hili na hili. And as a teacher I've done A B C D to display the child. Na kama mwalimu nimefanya hili na hili kumrudi huyu mtoto. They will not die. Hawatakufa. Tuko pamoja. Na be together. They will not die. Hawatakufa. But they are going to get the right display. Lakini watapata tabia nzuri. My mother used to be very tough. Mamangu alikuwa mkali sana. We used to run to our father for safety. Tulikuwa tunakibiria kwa baba yetu kwa usalama. My mother was understanding. Baba yetu alikuwa naelewa. Allow me to use that word understanding that time. Niruhusu nitumie lile neno kuelewa. Because God is a match maker. Kwa sababu Mungu anatengeneza vyema. If you a tough father and a tough mother. Akikupatia baba na mama mkali. Again it will not promote mental illness. Kisha hiyo haitachangia katika hali ya afya. Haitachangia mental health. Haitachangia katika hali ya afya. So my dad afya, was a bit uh, calm. Kwa hivyo babangu alikuwa ni mpole kiasi. But my mother. Lakini mamangu. Fanya makosa uone. Mhm. Mm Ukifika nyumbani uone umetengenezwa chakula na umepewa chakula ukule. Mm -hmm. You are something is wrong. Ujue kuna kitu ambacho hakiendi She used to ensure that before she takes her disciplinary measures. Alikuwa anahakikisha kama hajachukua hatua yote. I'm taking care of our stomach. Ni kwamba ameshughulikia tubo yako. Because ukichapa you not eat. Ukichapa hauta kula. So she ensures that she prepares a nice meal. Kwa hivyo anahakikisha chakula kizuri. Serves you very well. Na na prepares the environment very well. Na na kutengeneza vizuri. And she's preparing the environment and me prepare kamba. Na akitengeneza na kamba folded twice or thrice. Lakini natengeneza kamba imetengenezwa so vizuri. Kwa hivyo wazazi wenzangu. Let us work as a team. Wacha tufanye kama kikundi kimoja. We promote kimoja. mental health right at home. Ni kwamba tuchangie hali ya afya ya mawazo nyumbani. We partner nyumbani. with the teachers to ensure that we instill the right skills in these children. Na tuhakikishe kwamba tunaweka mafunzo mazuri kwa hawa watoto. And when we do that. Na ukifanya hilo. We will be able to promote mental health right from a family level. Tutaweza kuchangia hali jema ya afya ya mawazo. Church level, community level. Katika nyumbani na katika jamii and when these children grow up and they go to secondary school or other colleges na watoto wetu wakienda shule ya upili ama taasisi they will go and continue with the same wataendelea na wataendelea na hiyo hali proverbs 22 verse 6 ah midhali 22 sita train up a child in ways he should go mle mtoto kwa njia ambayo inafaa and when he grows up will not depart from the same na akikomaa akikoma hata aondoka katika zile njia so what is meant on disorder Je, hali ya ya maradhi ya mawazo ni nini? Before to, we talk about mental disorder. Kabla tunenee kuhusu hiyo maradhi ya mawazo. In summary we've talked about mental health. Uh, kwa kifupi tulinena kuhusu afya ya mawazo. And we've seen that as a parent you can be able to start this and to make your own environment. Na tumeona kama mzazi unaweza anzia pale nyumbani kutengeneza learning school for us to promote mental health. Uitengeneza nyumba ikuwe kama shule ya kujifunza mambo ya afya ya mawazo. And again you have said as parents. Na pia tumesema kama wazazi. For us to have a health nation. Ili sisi tukue na jamii jema ya afya. For us to have a health church. Na ili tukue na kanisa renye afya. For us to have a health society. Na tukue na jamii renye afya. You have a role to play. Kuna majukumu yako. Our house managers are good. Wasichana wetu nyumbani ni wazuri. But you have ended is equipping them with skills instead of equipping our children. Lakini tumeenda kwa kuwafunza wao kuliko kuwafunza watoto wetu. Our protection is destroyed. Na tukuwalinda watoto wetu kupita kiasi inaharibu. Our protection is promoting mental disorders. Kulinda kupita kiasi inachangia katika maradhi ya mawazo. Let's equip our children in a way that they can cope with. Wacha tu tuwezeshe watoto Tuwezeshe watoto wetu waweze kukubana na msongo wa mawazo maishani. So, according to World Mental Organization, World, Mental, World Health Organization, na kulingana na lile shirika la World Health Organization, mental disorder ni kwamba maradhi ya kimawazo is a behavioral or a mental pattern ni hali ama modoko wa kimawazo wa kitabia 
that is characterized by distress and impairment of personal functioning. Abayo inawashiriwa na hali ya mtu kutojimudu katika kitabia zake. So we see in mental health you are able to cope with minimal stresses. Kwa hivyo tumeona uh, katika hali ya mawazo unaweza kupambana na msongo and you are able to work and contribute positively to the society na unaweza kufanya kazi na kuchangia vizuri katika jamii so in absence of that kwa hivyo eh, hayo yasiyokuepo then it is mental illness uh, mambo hayo yasikuepo basi unakuwa na maradhi ya kimawazo and uh, in the hospitals these the doctors will be able to, di- to discover or to diagnose this na pale hospitalini madaktari wataweza kubaini haya by assessing the behavior of the patient uh, ya kuangalia katika tabia za huyu mgojo na kuuliza maswali ambayo itapelekea kuelewa mtu anahisi vipi how the person is thinking the na, thinking process na mtu hali yake ya, ya mawazo iko vipi and then after doing that you'll be able to make a diagnosis na baada ya hayo wataweza kubaini ni nini so when it comes to mental disorders there are signs or there are causes kwa hivyo tukifikia katika maradhi ya kimawazo kuna mambo ambayo yanachagia. These are categorized or they are classified in three main classes. Ah uh, haya yamewekwa katika vidaraja vitatu. And all these three main classes are again parents we are able to manage at home. Na katika vidaraja hizi tatu pia wazazi tunaweza kuyamudu pale nyumbani. So a family is, a, is an, a, in an institution or a unit. Kwa hivyo jamii ama familia ni sehemu that can offer solutions to very many issues. Sehemu ambayo inaweza leta suruhu ya mambo mengi sana. So one of the main cause of uh, mental disorder is biological factors. Kwa hivyo moja ya zile vitu ambazo zinachangia maradhi ya mawazo ni hali ya kibiolojia. This includes genetic factors. Uh, inahusiana na zile vitu ambazo unapata kutoka kwa wazazi wako. Infections. Uh, mambo ambayo yanawabukizwa. Brain defects. Uh, hali ya ya kasoro ma, mawazoni and parental defects na pia katika hali ya kasoro katika ulezi so what happens again as believers we have power and authority abacho kinafanyika kama sisi waumini ni kwamba tuna nguvu na uwezo this issue of genetic hereditary diseases we can stop them haya mambo ya kizazi tunaweza kuyasitiza but again we are living with the significant others lakini tunaishi pia na watu wengine wa maana sana kwetu so as we share the gospel with them kwa hivyo tunaposhiriki ijiri na wao let us also share with them the causes of mental illness wacha tushiriki na wao maradhi ambayo inaleta maradhi mawazoni so that they will be able to seek medical care na ili waweze kupata afya wapate kupata matibabu in case you see any behavior that is not uh, coming iwapo utaona tabia bazo sio sawa infections we recommend these eh? uh, mambo ya kuabukizwa tunaweza sema hili if a child is sick or you are sick or you uh, maybe you have gotten an accident that hey. affected your head kama kama wewe una maradhi ama mtoto ama umepata ajali ambayo imeadhiri mawazo yako make sure you consult your doctor hakikisha uh, kwamba umeenda kumuona daktari investigations will be done that to help or that to help prevent any major a uh, problem that can lead to mental illness ni kwamba uchunguzi utafanywa ili waweze kubaini kama kuna kitu ambacho kinaweza adhiri mawazo yako parental defects uh, hali ya kasoro ya ulezi this is for the young mothers hii ni ya wale wazazi ambao ni wachanga always let's ensure that in case of delivery you deliver in the hospital kila wakati unapojifungua tuhakikishe kwamba tumejifungulia hospitalini and live alone delivering the hospital even before delivery ensure that you visit antenatal clinics na pia hata kabla hujajifungua hakikisha kwamba umetembelea zile kliniki the health team will be able to assess you and the baby and see whether the baby is growing well na wale madaktari wataweza kukuangalia vizuri waone afya yako na ya mtoto kama iko sawa then when it comes to time of delivery deliver in the hospital na ikifikia ni wakati wa kujifungua jifungue pale hospitalini this will help us prevent prenatal defects and injuries hii itafanya tuweze kupambana na ile hali 
hali ya kasoro katika ulezi. And it will help us promote mental health. Na itatuwezesha tuweze kuchangia vizuri katika afya ya mawazo. The other factor that causes mental disorder is psychological factors. Uh, jambo lingine ambalo linachangia katika maradhi ya mawazo ni hali ya fikra. This is the trauma na hii ni hali ya ma, mateso ama usongo Love, wa kimawazo. Loss of a loved one and of a protection. Na ama kumpoteza mtu unayempenda sana ama kulindwa kupita kiasi. So we've already talked about of a protection. Kwa hivyo tumenena kuhusu kulinda kupita kiasi. We can change and God can honor that to bless the labors of our hands to bless the fruits of our womb. We nurture our children well. Tunaweza hapa kwamba Mungu abariki kazi ya mikono yetu na uzao wa tubo zetu na tuweze kuwalea vizuri. Trauma and loss of a loved one again we can be able to go uh, to undergo the process of mourning well. Ni kama tukimpoteza mtu tunayempenda tunaweza pitia ile hali ya kuomboleza kikamilifu. Uh, again I will not venture so much on this. I thank God for the church leadership. Na pia sitazama sana kwa haya na shukuru kwa uongozi wa kanisa. Already we've covered about loss and grief. Ni kwamba tumepitia katika ile hali ya kupoteza so na kuomboleza. So it happens make sure you go through the process well I ask with the professional or psychologist and they will be able to counsel you and they help you to cope with the stressors. Ni kwa kwamba kitu kama hiyo ikikupata ni vizuri kwa uliza ambao ni washauri wa kusaidia kupitia ile hali ya kuomboleza kwa ukamilifu. Social environmental factors is the other one. Ah jambo lingine linalochangia ni hali ya ya mambo ambayo yanatuzingira mazingira yetu Again it is within our, our ability at the family level to prevent this Na pia ni majukumu yetu na uwezo wetu katika hali ya familia kuzuilia haya So when it comes to a dis- dysfunctional family Kwa hivyo ikifikia ni pale kwa familia ambayo haiendi vizuri Is it how the workers will make our families to be functional Je ni madaktari watawezesha familia zetu kukaa vizuri Is it how the workers Jeni hao madaktari watafanya. This is my responsibility and your responsibility. Hii ni jukumu langu na ni jukumu lako wewe. To make your family to be functional. Ili kufanya familia yako ikuwe inafanya kazi vizuri. And even if you pray from January to December. Na hata ukioba kuanzia mwezi wa kwanza hadi wa 12. For God to give you a functional family. Ili Mungu akupatie jamii ama jamaa yenye inafanya vizuri. Still there is that which you have to do. Kuna ile sehemu yako unawajibika. Amen. Amina. Let's be available to ensure that we have families that are working Wacha tuhakikishe kwamba familia zetu ziko vizuri By ensuring that we create an environment that is good for our children Ili kwa ajili ya kutengeneza mazingira bora kwa watoto wetu And even our spouses Na pia kwa wao tumefunga doa na wao I think I've talked so much about children 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 Nimenena kuhusu watoto watoto sana Allow me this time to talk about spouses Niruhusu niseme kuhusu wapendwa wetu The for us to have functional family environment ili sisi tuweze kuwa na mazingira bora katika boma communication must be very effective kusemezana ni lazima kuwe kwa ukamilifu and when communication is effective between the spouses na wakati mazungumzo mazungumzo yako sawa katika wapenda nao definitely for children it's going to be effective kwa hakika kuenda kwa watoto pia itakuwa ni nzuri so the question is what makes this for communication not to be effective kwa hivyo swali ni nini inafanya mazungumzo kati ya watu wawili ya kuwe sawa because of stresses that are originating from the environment ama ni kwa sababu ya mambo ya msongo wa mawazo ambayo katika mazingara for us ladies kwa, kwa sisi kina dada each person understands his or her own family kila mtu anaelewa familia yake kikoje you know, kipekee you know what you can do within Una, this period of time unajua nini unaweza fanya wakati huu and you also know what can wait for another time na unaweza jua ni nini kinaweza subiri wakati mwingine where i'm driving to is helping each other to set realistic goals hapo unaelekeza ni kwamba tusaidiane mtu aweke mambo yake vizuri if you set an realistic goals as a family ukiweka shabaha ambayo inawezekana katika jamii definitely there will be stress ni kwamba kutakuwa na msongo wa mawazo pale because the resources are not allowing kwa sababu rasilimali hazili for you they are not allowing you to achieve that goal at that time rasilimali haziwaruhusu kutimiza lile lengo wakati huo let us learn to live our own lives wacha tujifunze kuishi maisha yetu let us not compare ourselves with another family tusijiriganishe na jamii nyingine we have very many marriages and all these families are different tuko na bama nyingi na tafamilia tofauti na ziko tofauti zote so for us to, for you to live uh, to have a functional family 
or a functional home kwa hivyo wewe ukitaka kuwa na mboma ambayo inafanya kazi vizuri kindly set realistic goals tafadhali weka lengo ambazo zinaweza timika improve your communication na uchangie vizuri katika hali ya kusemezana and have the heart to forgive na ukue na moyo wenye kusamehe have the heart to forgive kuwa na moyo wenye kusamehe and forgiveness is making people to die and get buried na kuto kutosamehe kunafanya watu wanakufa na wanazikwa because that is another thing that is going to help us cover the physical illnesses kwa sababu hiyo ni jambo jingine atuwezesha kuangalia katika hali yetu ya magonjwa ya mwili i thank god for believers na shukuru mungu kwa sababu ya umini you don't have to go to the doctor au utahiri kwenda pale kumuona daktari to be told about the cure of stomach cancers ili weda uambiwe utaponya kidogo cha cancers utaponya kidodo cha tubo kwa nini the predisposing factors of all these uh, conditions mambo ambayo yanachangia haya hali hizi kutendeka ni kwamba ni msongo wa mawazo stress that results because of unforgiveness msongo unaotokana kwa kutosamehe so it is within your capability to manage it kwa hivyo iko katika hali yako ya uweza ya kuimudu let us ensure that we have functional families that can communicate well tuhakikishe kwamba katika boma zetu tunakusemezana vilivyo and the families that uh, families that can forgive na jamii ambazo zinaweza samehe by so doing you are going to have a healthy family kwa kufanya hao tutakuwa na familia yenye afya and at the end of it all even your children will grow in a healthy manner na mwisho wa siku watoto wako watakuwa kwa jia yenye afya so the failure to having or doing such you have various mental conditions tusipofanya haya kuna hali nyingi za maradhi ya mawazo for this particular session allow me not to venture so much in the uh the types of uh, mental disorders na kwa kipindi hiki niruhusu nisizame katika aina ya maradhi ya mawazo but uh, it will be very important for us to cover the signs and symptoms of mental illness lakini itakuwa ya manufaa sana sisi kuangazia ishara za maradhi ya mawazo the signs of uh, the symptoms of mental illness in general ni kwamba uh, zile ishara zinaonekana kwa upana but depending with the specific mental illness lakini kulingana na maradhi haswa yale you can add or subtract one or two unaweza ongeza ama kutoa moja ama mbili but basically what you are covering at the moment is what you as a parent lakini cha msingi tunaangalia ni nini wewe kama mzazi you as a teacher in school ama wewe kama mkufunzi shuleni you can be able to observe, to, to observe in a child unaweza angalia katika mtoto and guide the child accordingly na umuelekeze mtoto vilivyo if if you if a child uh, Uh, has the following has been performing in school so well kama mtoto pale shuleni anafanya vizuri or you or you've been close to this child for uh, some years na ama umekuwa karibu sana na huu mtoto kwa miaka kadhaa you can very easily detect the normal from abnormal unaweza kubaini kitu kisicho cha kawaida and you can at the same time dis, dis, differentiate or get the abnormals from the normal Una, unaweza baini vitu visivyo vya kawaida that is one hiyo ni jambo moja feeling sad or down ni kwamba kuhisi ukiwa chini sana if you have uh, you are at home or you have a friend or a workmate or even in church here even in our own cell groups ladies groups we've known our people so well tukiwa katika vikundi tofauti kanisani kazini katika jamii tunajua marafiki wetu sana so, wenzetu sana any change from the normal ya mabadiliko yoyote kwa hali ya kawaida you have a role to play to help or to refer uko na jukumu ya kusaidia ama kuelekeza so one of the signs and symptoms of mental illness is feeling sad kwa hivyo ishara moja ya maradhi ya mawazo ni kusikia kuhuzunika being confused ama kuchanganyikiwa lack of a uh, reduced ability to concentrate na uwezo wa kumakinika unapungua if it's a child in school the concentration levels they reduce kama ni mtoto akiwa shuleni hali yake ya kumakinika inapungua excessive fears and or worries A, ama hali ya uoga unapozidi sana extreme mood changes of and, high, le- high and low episodes uh, ama hali ya kujihisi kibe kimwili inaenda chini na ingine inapanda withdraw from friends and activities na wengine wanajitenga kutokana na watu ama kazi 
significant tiredness and low energy or problem in sleeping. Ama mtu anasikia hana nguvu na kaona shida sana ikifikia ni kulala. Attachment from reality. Ama mtu anajitenga na mambo ambayo inaonekana. So you can see a person with one or two or three of these symptoms. Kwa hivyo unaweza muona mtu akiwa na ishara moja ama mbili ya hizi. Kindly refer. Kwa hivyo tafadhali muelekeze. If it is in church here share with the leadership. Kama ni hapa kanisani shiriki na viongozi. If it is at the home cell level share with the leadership at that level. Ama katika katika hali ya uongozi uh, shiriki na viongozi katika hali hii. These are signs that can make each one of us to participate actively. Hii ni ishara ambazo zinaweza tufanya mmoja wetu kuhusika vilivyo. To detect the problem hali enough. Na ili kubaini ili shida mapema iwezekanavyo. At, uh, sometimes back I was telling my husband it is really disinteresting even to sit down and watch news. Wakati mwingine nilikuwa namwambia mume wangu kwamba saa zingine hata haipendezi kuketi chini kuangalia runinga taarifa. Because if the, if the report or the news is killing 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 killing. Kwa sababu ikiwa taarifa ni mauaji mauaji mauaji. Then we are losing it. Je, ba, basi tunapoteza hapa. So for us to correct this. Kwa hivyo ili tuweze kurekebisha haya. My people we are not wasting time to be here this afternoon. Watu wangu hatu petezi wakati kuwa hapa jioni hii. Learn something run with it and save a life somewhere. Ajua kitu kibia nacho na uokoe maisha mahali. Ah uh, the the suicide attempts the suicide episodes that are being reported every now and then. Zile hali tunasikia kujinyonga zinaripotiwa kila wakati sasa na wakati mwingine. From suicide now you are they are reporting of um, suicide. Zinatoka katika kujiua inafikia katika mauaji ya haraiki. Suicide is where you kill yourself. Ah, uh, uh, kujinyonga ni wakati wewe unajiua mwenyewe. Omsendo is where you kill yourself and kill the whole family. Na mauaji ya haraiki ni wakati unaua watu wengi. Tumesikia news kama hizo. Ta. Are we together? Have we seen that in our, in our news? Tumeona hayo katika runinga zetu na taarifa. It has become the hound of the day. Nimekuwa ni kama mabaya ya kila siku. Because of the stressors that are all over. Kwa sababu ya msongo ambao uko kila mahali. And that is why I started by saying that parents we can do good to our children. Na ndio maana nikaanzia kwa kusema wazazi tunaweza fanya vizuri kwa watoto wetu. By ensuring that we equip them with the values that will help them tomorrow. Kwa kuhakikisha kwamba tumeweka tambia ndani mwao zitawasaidia siku ya kesho. Skills that will help them cope with the normal stressors of life. Na mafunzo yatawasaidia kupambana na misongo ngo ya maisha So another sign and symptom of mental disorder is ishara nyingine ya maradhi ya mawazo ni inability to cope with the problems or stress ni hali ya kushindwa kupambana na msongo wa and mawazo And this is very very serious Na hii ni jambo la kumaanisha sana There is a time kuna wakati when children were born in schools day after the other Wakati wanafunzi walikuwa na choma shule wakati na mwingine Well Christians we stood in the cup we prayed. Uh, wa, wa Kristo ni kweli tulisimama pengoni na tukaomba. But now apart from praying, lakini kando na kuoba, let us also act, participate actively. Wacha tukajumuike pia. We equip our children with the right values. Ni kwamba tuwaweke watoto wetu tabia nzuri. So that they will be able to cope with the stress na ili waweze kupambana na msongo and they will not be resisting and displaying their anger or anxiety in doing abnormal things na watakuwa na dhihirisha kuto to, to shereka kwao kwa kufanya mambo yasiyo ya kawaida so another sign on symptom of mental illness is uh, abuse of uh, substances ishara nyingine ya maradhi ya mawazo ni kutumia madawa this one they do that because they want to cope with life wanafanya haya sababu wanataka kupambana na maisha they don't have the skills to help them cope with the situation hawana ule uwezo wa kupambana na ile hali maybe it's at school they are given a lot of assignments they are not able to cope with them labda ni pale shuleni wamepewa kazi nyingi hawawezi kupambana nayo maybe it is at place of work where you have a lot of task objectives to meet ama ni pale kazini una malengo mengi umewekewa utimizi again because this child originated from a dysfunctional family na ni kwa sababu labda huyu mtoto alitoka kwa jamii ambao haifanyi vizuri they have no coping mechanism hawana jie ya kujimundu pale they don't know how to deal with the minimal levels of stress hawajui jinsi ya kupambana na misongo when the pressure builds wakati ile sinikisho linapanda they run to take alcohol wanakibiria kunywa pombe if they don't get alcohol lakini kama hawatapata pombe they go in these other areas to to smoke the 
these other substances that are messing up with their lungs. Wanaenda kutumia madawa mengine ambayo inaharibu miri yao. So parents let's 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 participate as a team. Wa kwa hivyo wazazi wacha tujumuike na tuwajibike kwa pamoja. Health team will participate. Ni kwamba kikundi cha afya kitafanya kazi yake. In prevention. Kwa kuzuilia. Treating na kutibu rehabilitating na pia kupeleka ili kuirekebisha and promoting health as we are doing na kuchangia afya kama vile tunavyofanya but wewe kama mzazi you have the biggest role to play in we, prevention we mzazi una jukumu kubwa sana la kuzuilia so help us we fight this issue of mental illness kwa hivyo tusaidie tupigane na hii hali ya mawazo we promote mental health as a team na kwamba tuchangie afya ya mawazo kama kikudi and we give health workers very minimal time to deal with other issues not to treat mental illness na madaktari tuwapatie kazi rahisi sio ya kutibu maradhi ya mawazo at the same time we think give the pastoral team very Time, na pia tuwapatia wachungaji kazi rahisi to think big and have a big vision for the ministry ili wafikirie kuhusu upana wa wa huduma not to pray for children because of behaviors that are not up, uh, telling no, behavior that is abnormal lakini si kuombea watoto kwa sababu ya tabia ambazo sio za kawaida so we have a role to play kwa hivyo sisi tuna majukumu so out of the many many uh, mental health conditions that result because of uh, all this, the issues that we have discussed eh? kwa hivyo maradhi ya mawazo ambayo yanatokana na inachepuka kwa yale mambo yote tumeyazungumzia today i will not mention many conditions uh, leo sita uh, sita taja maradhi mengi but allow me to mention something about depression lakini niruhusu niseme kitu kuhusu Uh, kusongwa kwa mawazo depression a mental uh, world health organization refers to depression as mental disorder na hii inabainika ni kama ni hali ya kimawazo that is kawaida, characterized by persistent sadness ambayo inaonekana kwa njia ya ya huzuni ambayo inazidi and loss of interest in activities that you normally enjoy na kutokuwa na mvuto wa kufanya kazi ambao kwa kawaida huwa unaifurahia this is accompanied by inability to carry out daily activities na hii pamoja inaandamana na ile hali ya kushindwa kufanya kazi za kila siku so if this continues for a period of two weeks kwa hivyo hii hali ikizidi kwa wiki ya majuma mawili one can be diagnosed with depression mmoja anaweza semekana kwa bako na depression ama msongo wa mawazo statistics from uh, researchers has it that 300 million people wa, watafiti wanasema kwamba watu wafikiao milioni 300 they affected by depression globally and this condition is linked to suicide ni kwamba katika ulimwengu wale watu wako na ile msogo ya mawazo na inapelekea kujiua Statistics still has it that 1.9 million depressed cases uh, pia hesabu pia inasema uh, vizazi kama vile ama milioni 1.9 The, it was reported in Kenya by the year 2015 ni kwamba visa kama hivyo ziripotiwa Kenya mwaka wa 2015 and it ranked the country to be the sixth country with the highest number of depression cases among na, African countries na ikaonekana kwamba Kenya ilikuwa na bali sita kwa watu ambao wana magonjo ya mawazo katika Afrika so what you are saying is habari tunasema ni hili depression affects all ages ni kwamba msongo wa mawazo unaadhiri watu wa rika zote just like other physical conditions kama maradhi yale mengine ambayo yanaonekana disorders are not respect of persons ni kwamba maradhi ya mawazo hayaheshimu mtu they come zinakuja any time any hour yanakuja wakati wowote kwa njia yoyote but for us we need to stand firm and be guided by the truth of the word lakini sisi tunafaa tusimama imara na tuongozwe na ukweli wa neno let us believe in god wacha tuamini kwa mungu let us not set uh, uh, objectives or set priorities that are not aligned with our resources wacha tusiweke malengo ambayo hayalingani na rasilimali zetu let us learn to live within our limits na tujifunze kuishi kulingana na, na upana wetu 
And if there a problem comes, let us also learn to share. Na kama kuna shida itatukia na tuweze kushiriki. They say a problem shared is halved. Wanasema kwamba shida ambayo imeshirikiwa iko imesuluhishwa nusu. So when we learn to share and to learn to move with life, take life easy. Kwa hivyo tukikubali kuwa tunashiriki na tuyachukulia maisha vilivyo. We'll be able to overcome depression. Tutaweza kuibuka na kushida msongo wa mawazo. Amen. Amen. So signs and symptoms of depression. Kwa hivyo ishara za msongo wa mawazo. It's like we have already covered them because we covered general signs and symptoms for all mental conditions. Ni kama tumezipitia kwa sababu kwa kina tulipitia uh, ishara za uh, afya ya mawazo. So these ones are specific for the depression. Kwa hivyo hizi ishara ninazotaja ni haswa kwa ile ugojo wa depression ama Feel, msogo wa mawazo. Feeling depressed or feeling sad. Ni kuhisi uko na huzuni uko chini sana. Loss of interest or pressure in activities once you enjoyed. Na kutokuwa na tamani ya kufanya mambo ambayo umekuwa ukiyafurahia hapo awali. Changes in appetite, weight loss or weight gain with ah. unrelated diet diet which is not related with dieting ama hali ya kukosa mvuto wa kukula chakula ama unakuwa na uzani ama unapungua ambao haihusiki na hali ya kujitenga kichakula trouble in sleeping or sleeping too much uh, kwa tika hali ya kulala na rara sana ama unakosa usingizi loss of energy or increased fatigue uh, wakati mwingine unajihisi hauna nguvu na saa zingine unasikia mawazo yako haiko sawa feeling worthless or guilty unajihisi kwamba uko na makosa mengi ama unajihisi wewe haufai Difficult in thinking or concentrating or making decisions. Unajipata uwezi kufanya maamuzi ama saa zingine kumakinika kwako kuna shida. And at this point, na katika hali hii wakati huu, this is when the individual feels hopeless. Uh, mtu anafikia mahali anahisi kwamba hana tumaini tena. Reaches a point you feel that life has no meaning. Unafika mahali unahisi kwamba maisha hana maana tena. Because the devil is a liar. Na kwa sababu shetani ni muongo. Makes even the Christians to start for, to, to start doubting the power of God. Unakuta wa Kristo wanaanza kushuku nguvu za Mungu. At times even people start asking themselves where was god when this was happening sasa zingine wanajiuliza mungu alikuwa wapi haya kitendeka so when bad things or situations happen in our life kwa hivyo haya mambo ya kitendeka katika maisha yetu let us learn to consult or to share with the people wacha tujifunze kushiriki na watu let us refer to the, the relevant authorities or to the relevant people who can help na tuelekeze kwa watu ambao wanaweza kusaidia we have counselors all over uko na washauri kila mahali we have psychiatric nurses all over na pia tuna madaktari wa kiakili kila mahali so let us make use of them kwa hivyo tuwatumie vizuri let us also have the share with the church leadership as we start and saying na tushiriki na viongozi wa kanisa kama vile tulisema we save life na ili tuweze kuokoa maisha this can be your child inaweza kuwa huyu ni mtoto wako this can be your neighbor ama aweza kuwa jirani yako it can be your brother your sister anaweza kuwa dugu wa madada yako when we see any of these signs that we have See. Tukiona ishara moja hizi ambazo tumeona. Let us not wait for the worst to happen. Usigojee ile mabaya sana yatendeke. You cannot help as an individual. Uwezi uende usiweze kusaidia kama binafsi. But I started saying referring is a strength. Lakini tulisema kuelekeza kuna uweza. This will help us curb the reports ama the major reports that you are getting in every other day. Ili tatusaidia kupunguza zile ripoti tunasikia kwa media kila wakati. Of suicide in, uh, uh, with, of suicide uh, incidences and the misindo incidences that are taking place. Na kwa zile mahambari tunahisi tunasikia kuhusu watu wanajinyonga ama wanaua wengine. So we have a uh, depression can be of three types. Kwa hivyo hali hii ya ugojwa wa mawazo ya depression inaweza kuwa aina tatu. There is major depression that is caused by genetic factors. Ah kuna ile msongo wa mawazo ambao ina inasababishwa na hali ya kijamii. That is what is inherited from the parents. Hiyo ndio inapitishwa kutoka kwa wazazi. And there is reactive depression or mild depression. Ah ama kuna ile hali ya depression ambayo iko inaonekana iko chini. So reactive depression is 
what most uh, people go through. Uh, hii hali ya msogo wa mawazo ni ile watu wengi wanapitia. At one time or the other you and me we go through depressive episode. Uh, wakati mmoja mimi na wewe tunapitia ile hali ya, ya kimsukumo wa kimawazo. This is reactive depression. Uh, hii ni hali ya mawazo ambayo inaitwa reactive. So when we are able to deal with this. Kwa hivyo ukiweza kupambana na hii. Take the right counseling. Na upate ushauri unaofa. It will not graduate to become severe and depression. Ah, uh, haitahitimu hai kufikia hiki kiwango hicho kingine kia chama mawazo. So again the causes of depression takes us back where we started. Kwa hivyo chanzo cha msongo wa mawazo inaturejesha mahali tulianza. Where we talked on biopsychosocial factors. Ambao tuliongea kuhusu mambo ya kibiolojia ama ya kijamii. That is genetic, uh, biochemistry, personality, genetics, environmental factors. All all these are factors that contribute haya mambo yote tuliyasemea ya mazingara ya kibinafsi ya kijamii yote tulisemea to causes of depression na kwamba yanasababisha msongo wa mawazo so treatment of somebody who is undergoing depressive episode kwa hivyo matibabu ya mtu ambaye anapitia hali hii ya mawazo it is in three levels inakuwa katika hatua tatu that is psychotherapy kwamba ni ile hali ya or talking therapy psychotherapy or talking therapy ni hali ya kumsaidia ama kumtibu kwa hali ya kusema this can be done as an individual inaweza afanyika kwa hali ya mtu binafsi or you introduce to a group of people who have gone through the same episode ama akauweke katika kikundi cha watu ambao wamepitia kwa pamoja hali and kama hiyo and through that you are able to come out of it faster na kupitia hali kama hiyo unaweza kuishida kwa haraka also another treatment is support. Ah uh, hali nyingine ya kutibu ni kusaidia ama kusaidia. This can be achieved by discussing practical solutions and the possible causes of uh, educating family by educating family members. Hii inawezekana pale unapo funza watu ama jamii yao unawafunza kuhusu hiyo mambo ya msongo wa mawazo. So mainly mainly ah uh, kwa kina sana depression treatment is psychotherapy where Wait. by through talking 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 you help somebody to come out of it kwa hivyo kutibu maradhi haya ya msogo wa mawazo sana sana tumeona kwamba unaweza yatibu kwa kupitia kusema unampa mtu fursa ya kusema na kujiongea give somebody a shoulder to lean on wapatie mtu mahali pa kulilia let him or her verbalize all her problems. Wacha atoe maboyo yote ya mashida zake zote. Then offer solutions. Let give them a, a period or a humble environment. Na uwapatie mazingira, mazingira na uwape suruhu. For them to come up with the solutions that can fit their their situation. Wapate mazingira ambao wanaweza kuja na suruhu ambazo zinaweza fahari zao. And these solutions they come up with they must be realistic. Na hizi suruhisho ambazo wanakuja nazo lazima zikuwe ni vitu zinaweza kana because again if they come up with uh, with the goals or solutions that are not realistic kwa sababu wakikuja na lengo zingine ambazo haziwezi zikafanyika it will make the depressive episode to be even more severe itafanya ile maradhi ya mawazo ikuwe baya hata zaidi so risk factors who is this person who is vulnerable of getting depression je ni mtu mgani huyu ambaye ako katika hatari ya kupata haya maradhi ya mawazo person with painful life events uh, ni mtu ambaye ako katika mambo ambayo amepitia magumu na mazito katika maisha somebody who has lacked successful coping strategies ama ni mtu ambaye amekosa mauweza wa kuweza kujimundu vizuri again taking us back to the family setup inaturudisha pale nyumba pale kwa jamii where we are supposed to mentor and equip our children with coping strategies mahali tunafaa kuwafunza watoto wetu wakuwe na binu za kumundu so parents the harm we are doing to our children when you don't expose them and equip them with these techniques kwa hivyo wazazi ambapo wakati hatuwafunzi watoto wetu kwa hii na haya mafunzo once they grow up and get assigned these responsibilities there is likelihood of getting depression wakikuwa na waenda wapatane na hali ya kuwajibika wanaweza jipata na maradhi haya ya msongo wa mawazo children 
Watoto watakuwa atafanya harusi ya kupendeza. A man somewhere hoping that is marrying a wife. Mtu mahali anafikiria kwamba anamuoa mke. Akifika nyumbani this lady is not able to cook. Akifika pale nyumbani huyu dada hawezi kupika. Because parents we equipped our house managers with all techniques of cooking. Kwa sababu sisi wazazi tuliwafunza wasichana wetu wa kazi jinsi ya kupika. And we left our girls not uh, being equipped. Lakini mabinti zetu hatukuwafunza. In the name of protecting them. Katika jina tu ya kuwalinda. Loving them. Na kuwapenda. Mtoto aweza kupika. Kwani the house help pumping a lot of money. Kwa kwa sababu msichana wa kazi namlipa pesa mingi mtoto wangu hawezi pika. What I, I request or I, or I pray we get this afternoon. Obirangu adhuhuri hii ni. It is true. Ni kwamba you are paying house managers a lot of money. Ni kweli unawalipa ule msichana pesa mingi. But apart from paying them a lot of money. Lakini kando na kumlipa pesa mingi. You are also ensuring that when they leave your house. Unahakikisha akiondoka kwako kwa nyumba. They will not go for a training house in there. Hawataenda kupata mafunzo huko nje. You have already equipped them with the all methods of cooking. Umewawezesha kwa jia zote na mbinu zote za kupika. They are smart makers. Na wao wanaweza tengeneza jamii vizuri. But where is your child? Lakini mtoto wako wako wapi? After marriage, akishaolewa funga doa. The very first week or the first month or the first year, mention it. Wiki ya kwanza ama mwezi wa kwanza ama mwaka wa kwanza tajiri. They start getting depressed, depressed. Wanaanza kupata shida ya mawazo. Because of life's challenges. Kwa sababu ya ya maisha ilivyo. The husband anataka kula kuku. Mhm. The husband wants to eat chicken. Ama bwana anataka kukula kuku. But your daughter doesn't know even how to slaughter chicken. Lakini huyu msichana hajui hata kuchinja kuku. Are we together? Je, tuko pamoja? Are we together parents? Tuko pamoja wazazi. So there are many areas or there are many factors that contribute to depression. Kwa hivyo kuna mambo mengi ambayo yanachangia msongo wa mawazo. And all these factors. Na mambo haya yote. They are within our ability to manage them. Yako katika hali yetu ya uweza ya kuyamudu. Let us manage them to ensure that we attain mental health. Kwa hivyo tuangalie vizuri na tuhakikishe kuna afya ya mawazo. House managers are very good. Wasichana wetu wa kazi ni wazuri sana. I also have one in the house. Na pia mimi niko na mmoja nyumbani. Lakini when the schools close. Lakini shule ikifungwa. She also deserves to get services from young girls. Si pia yeye anafaa kupata huduma kutokana na mtoto wake binti. Wasazi are we together? Wazazi tuko pamoja? Are we together? Tuko pamoja? Let your children learn. Wacha watoto wako wajifunze. Today they may feel that you are becoming a harsh mother or a harsh father. Leo wanaweza hisi kwamba wewe unakuwa mkali sana bwana baba mkali. But tomorrow when they get married and get employed and go to school and face other challenges in life. Lakini kesho wakienda waolewe wapitie changamoto zingine pale shuleni. They will come back pressing you. Watakuja wakikusukuma wewe. Because you'll be able to cope with all that. Kwa sababu utawe I thank God for mothers. Nashukuru Mungu kwa kina mama. I thank God for my mother. Na nashukuru Mungu kwa mamangu. When I was growing up I used to think my mother hates me. Wakati nilikuwa nakuwa nilifikiria kwamba mamangu ananichukia. Because any slight mistake. Kwa sababu makosa kidogo tu. Kiboko. Ilikuwa kiboko. But the other children kuna wale hakuwa anachapa. Lakini watoto wengine kuna baadhi ya So to even when we sit when she comes to visit me will I like reflecting those moments because I like my children also learning from that. Kwa sababu wakati kitebea huwa natafakari ile mambo ninataka kufunza. When I said rules is not tough rules because I hate them. Nikiweka sheria kali si kwa sababu nawachukia. But they are there for them to learn from them. Lakini zile sheria ziko pale na ili waweze kujifunza. So that tomorrow we give past that is work. Ili kesho tuwapatie wachungaji kazi Health can give us and give them easy work. Na wale ambao ni wasaidizi wao wakuwe na kazi rahisi. And at the end of the day, na mwisho wa siku, we also give police officers easy work. Pia waaskari wetu wakuwe na kazi rahisi. So I send letters deal with our children accordingly. Kwa hivyo nilisema wacha tuwajibikie watoto wetu vilivyo. I was even at one point I think I was overthinking eh. Na wakati mmoja sijui nilikuwa na tafakari eh. When people were doing uh, the BBI. Wakati watu walikuwa wanapata ile ripoti ya BBI. Yes, I was thinking some of these rules in schools can through magoa they can be reversed nilikuwa nafikiria labda sheria hizi zingine shuleni kitema kwa mzee mistake mahali mtoto akikosa shuleni the power is given back to mwalimu ili uweze upatieno kwa mwalimu to discipline them ni ili aweze kumrudi mtoto are we together parents pamoja 
Tuko pamoja. Tuko pamoja. But it's unfortunate that it was not fact and ini ni bibi yae. Lakini wale wetu haikuwa kwa pare kwa ripoti ya bibi yae. But as a family you can have your own bibi yae. Lakini wewe kama jamii unaweza kuwa na bibi yae. Umrudi mtoto. It is biblical. Ni katika hali ya bibi yae. Before the loss of Kenya. Kabla ya kupotea kwa Kenya. The Bible was there. Kenya, Bibiria the Bible pale. was there. Bibiria ilikuwa pale. And it is as we train a child. Na inasema kwamba tuwafunze watoto. So that they grow in the right way. Na ili wakue kwa jia inayofaa. And when they grow they will not depart from that. Na wakikomaa hawata odoka kwa zile jia. The same Bible is telling you and me. Bibiria inakwambia wewe na mimi. You spare the rod. Ni kwamba usipo mrudi mtoto. You spare the child. Ni kwamba utamuharibu. So if the Bible is really supporting us wazazi. Kama Bibiria inatunga mkono wazazi. You are not able to beat the child at home. And when the teacher does it in school, you are still complaining. And when this child grows up, he will police cells. We are giving pastors restless nights. Relatives restless nights. So what is it that we can do to stop this? kusimamisha haya Allow me to call uh, one of my friends Niruhusu ni mwite mmoja wa marafiki zangu That is uh, Sami uh, kwa jina Sami Sami I will give you 5 minutes uh, nitakupa 5 minutes tano. only dakika 5 pekee Why I'm calling Sami Then kwa nini namuita Sami is so that ili kwamba Ah uh, when I teach these things you may think I'm teaching like this because I'm uh, Um, in medical field unaweza fikiria nafunza haya ni kwa sababu mimi ni uh, ni daktari ama niko katika hali ya utibabu. when i say mental health is can be man, mental illness can be managed wakati nasema hali ya mawazo inaweza uh, kuwa inaweza mudiwa it is something that is manageable ni kitu ambacho tunaweza kukimundu so you and me we have to participate actively kwa hivyo mimi na wewe tunafaa kuhusika vilivyo to detect it hali enough na ili tuweze kuibaini mapema iweze kana to make management easier ili tufanye ile hali ya kuimundu ikuwe so some is here with me kwa hivyo sama kwa hapa pamoja nami he is a friend of mine yeye ni rafiki yangu i am the therapist na yeye yuko katika wauguzi he has benefited from the services that we offer na yeye amesaidika na zile huduma tunazotoa and today he is here to tell us na yuko hapa leo atuelezee depression is manageable ni kwa ba msongo wa mawazo so can we appreciate sam kwa hivyo tumpigie makofi sam 5 minutes dakika tano. sawa 5 minutes dakika tano. Bari zenyu. Kwa majina naitwa Samuel Boyo. Ninaishi hapa mtaa wa Zimmerman. Naona I live unaona pale we bridge Zimmerman. Naishi tu hapa karibu Zimmerman. Uh, karibu na um, bridge between Zimmerman and 44. It's called Rurie. Pale Rurie. Sasa I have lived here for about five years. Nimeishi hapa kwa muda wa miaka mitano. And I was today the reason I'm here I was invited by my sister Mwenda. Ah nilikuwa nimealikwa hapa na dada yangu Mwenda. Ah she is our as she has introduced she has seen everything I was sitting there so I think I'll give my story a a small experience with it. Kwa hivyo nitawapatia story yangu kidogo. How it started? Ah jinsi ilivyoanza. I come out of this problem and my and how I want to to be a good example all na vile nilitaka kuwa mfano mzuri kwa watu eh, so that they can learn from me and seek help ili waweze kujifunza kutokana nami naweza kusaidika okay mi ninakuanga na ugonjwa wa kiakili unaitwa bipolar and it has two extremes na niko na ile hali ya bipolar na when i'm on my highs wakati niko katika hali yangu ya juu I feel like I want to be the president. I walk around and now since I want to be the president. Na hizi kwa bana nataka kuwa rais na tembea kama rais. The vile tu nina nguvu mingi ambayo I can employ everyone in Kenya. Ni kama naweza weza kumudu kila mtu hapa Kenya. Vile nataka kwenda kwa Obama. Alafu pia ninakuwa na ile silali na ninakuwa na bidhaa behavior inatoa nguo. Hata kuna episode nilifanyika hapa Kamiti Road. I think 
nilisaidia wana watu lakini hakuna mtu alinisaidia watu walikuwa wanasema nimelogwa nimekunywa so people they don't mind another things wakati uko low unajifungia kwa nyumba hutaki kutoka unasikia you have a immense guilt hey, ume, u, 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 unasikia ujafanya ujakosea mtu lakini umekosa hutaki kukula you also think you have a lot of money in the bank sasa unafikiria ni kama uko na pesa mingi kwa bank pia unakuja generous unataka kupatia mtu pesa unataka kupatia mtu kila kitu lakini nime able to call for the last 15 years plus nimeweza kumudu ile hali yangu kwa miaka kama 15 and uh, is something that i have really really struggled up to date na ni kitu nimengangana sana mpaka sasa na ile experience nimepitia i could not like even my worst enemy to pass na ile hali nilipitia siwezi taka hata adui yangu ule mbaya sana apitie hiyo hali i am advocating for mental health in madari mental hospital in my own small capacity na mimi ni kwamba ni barozi wa hali ya mawazo afya ya mawazo pale madari katika hali yangu binafsi i go for the conferences that i have uh, doctors who treat me and my friends naenda katika kongamano na warsha wakati mahali madaktari wangu wananitibu wako kuna daktari mmoja aliniambia in their life in the in the their line of practice Nadakari. they have never seen such a good example that's why they tell me to go to talk to people and i can change their life and maybe parents who are back at home those who are in the remote area they can get and look for help which Now, is i assure them it is there and i say since sami was helped and i can able to live a mean life, productive life today like today i sell good earrings to ladies these are the one who are supported me to buy for my drugs kwa hivyo nimekuwa nikitumika kama mfano kwa bia watu inawezekana i have a family na niko na jamii i started small but uh, today i'm not struggling as i started i nilianza kwa hali ya chini lakini sasa singangani sana but i have so much i can say and you have had i have been given only 5 minutes na megi ya kusema lakini pale tu dakika 5 i have uh, becoming uh, i have uh, on uh, december last friday day like today ya juma ilido pita wakati kama siku kama leo by Kevin Kamau kuna mhariri kwa jina Kamau standard group ali halili standard ari experience yangu aliniuliza i share to people it can impact people life ari niruhusu nikasema ili iweze kuadhiri watu vizuri na that's uh, wale nimepatia ni uh, you can go uangalie ya 21st ya 22nd usome ambayo mm. inaisha leo then unaweza learn ukiona mtu hapo unamsaidia na pia mimi nimejikubali hiyo ndio mwazo wangu wa kuwa wa recover when i accepted myself wakati nilijikubali mimi mwenyewe that was my starting point ilikuwa hali yangu ya kuanza initially before nilikuwa na kosa na kunywa sikuwa na kunywa madawa Mwanzo nilikuwa napewa kibu. dawa na kiboko tukiwa nyumbani watu wote wanakaa hapo wanachukua kiboko wanachukua dawa wananipiga wote so since nimepewa dakika tano <laughs> i'll keep i'll keep sharing more and more and more tazidi kushiriki sana na sana but as we go for today i would like ladies who are here I have good jewelries. Na kina dada hapo kwa hapa. Niko na vitu madadi. Today I have spent time with you and I'm, I, I do hokin but I don't call myself my hoka I call myself oh. shell entrepreneur. Huwa nauza hizi vitu na despite walking around selling I oh. sell good jewelries that they don't affect ladies na and I'm sure ladies kuzia. like good stuff. Please don't go home one goes for 300 support me at least I get for medicine today and uh, food for my family too kwa hivyo kuna bidhaa nauzia kina dada as you know in a journey so unaweza nunua shiriki 300 na ili thank you, thank you, you sam thank you sam kala for him again tumpigie makofi tena asante makofi asante depression is a mental condition uh, hali ya msongo wa mawazo ni ya it is manageable
na unaweza kuidhibiti you can be diagnosed today with mental illness na unaweza kubainika kwamba uko na maradhi yale and after going through the treatment process na ukipitia ile hali ya matibabu you can still regain your mental health na unaweza pokea hali yako ya afya ya mwili some married uh, uh, some wameoa just like many men in this uh, hall uh, uh, kama wanaume wengi katika kanisa he is able to maintain his family anaweza kuidhibia kuitumikia familia yake he is able to cope with normal stresses of life uh, na anaweza kumundu msongo wa mawazo you send him saying he's an entrepreneur na uma hii sikia akisema kwamba yeye ni mwanabiashara he hands is living for his family na kwamba yeye anapata chakula ya jamii so we give yake. god all the glory and honor kwa hivyo tunampatia mungu shukrani shuk- zote if we did zote. it for sam kama alimfanyia sam he can do it to your brother your sister at all hata wewe anaweza mfanyia ndugu yako ama dada yake kama alimfanyia sam he can do it to your neighbors back at all pia anaweza afanyia jirani zake share with them kwa hivyo shiriki na wao le refer them accordingly na uelekeze vizuri madhara hospital is open 24 hours madhara hospital imefunguliwa masaa 24 all you need to have is an hif card unafaa tu kuwa na kadi ya nhif you be treated and you go home without any any more money that you are supposed to pay the hospital bila kutumia pesa mingi nimesahau kusema nilisaidikia madhara nikapata dawa zangu zote huko counseling proper diagnose i started proper diagnose treatment counseling psychology and also support economically i think madhare and she can give a testimony on my behalf kwa hivyo nilisaidikia pale madhare nilisaidika huko mimi hali ya ushauri na madawa alipata pale madhare so amen we give god all the glory tunashukuru mungu now according to my watch kulingana na saa is good to be a disciplined leader isn't it nzuri kuwa kiongozi to finish now nafaa kutimi kutamatisha sasa i still have another person niko na rafiki mwingine who has recovered from substance abuse ambaye amaweza kurekebika kutokana na utumizi substance abuse ni madawa zinatumika za kulevia amaweza kuyadhibiti yana madawa it is also a form of uh, it's also another way that is contributing to mental illness ni hali nyingine pia inachangia katika maradhi ya mawazo so i have somebody who has gone through the process na mtu ambaye amepitia ile hali and he is now able to continue with normal life na anaweza kuendeleza maisha ya treated and continue with normal life na ametibiwa na ana uwezo wa kuendelea na maisha yake ya kawaida sasa tell me niambie do i stop here or we give him 2 minutes we give him 2 minutes tupatie dakika 2 mam mam we continue thank you very much yeah, god bless you asante mungu so kubali. allow me to say this aniruhusu niseme haya so ah uh, substance abuse ah kwa ba kutumia vibaya kwa madawa ah chemicals or, su- or substances that change person's mood or feeling ni madawa ambayo yana ya mabadilisha hali ya kuhisi ya mtu these are drugs hii ni madawa that are categorized in various classes ambayo uh, yameweka katika vidaraja vitofauti and for us to, to understand and internalize na ili tuweze kuelewa vizuri these are drugs examples i'll give they are the ones that are used in a day in day house house and here ani kama yale yanatumika kila siku kule nje ah kuna pombe bangi kuna bangi cigarettes na sigara uh, stimulants like drugs that are used in the hospitals na if they are not used for the right purpose they become abused na madawa mengine kama inayotumika hospitali inatumiwa kwa jengi nyingine mbaya drugs like valium na uh, madawa kama valium so how will you know somebody who has abused uh, drugs tutajuaje mtu ambaye ametumia madawa vibaya Very quickly according to Nakanda report uh, kulingana na shirika la Nakanda 7.6 million Kenyans uh, milia, watu milioni 7.6 wa Kenya between ages 15 to 65 years uh, katikati ya umri wa miaka 15 na 65 they abuse drugs kwamba wanatumia madawa vibaya 7.6 million o milioni 7.6 idadi ya watu wa Kenya population at the moment is how many millions na sasa hizi tuko milioni ngapi How many? For the seven. Atuko milioni 47. Then from the same statistics. Na katika hisabati hiyo hiyo. 5.1 million between ages 15 to 65 they abuse alcohol. Ah uh, watu milioni 5 katika ule umri pia wanatumia pombe vibaya. Between one uh, 
the 1.7 million again Kenyans they abuse miraha. Pia kuna mamilioni ya watu wa Kenya ambao wanatumia miraha. And it's sorry to say the biggest population is coming from Meru. Na kusema kwamba idadi ya wengi wao wanatoka Meru. And in northeastern. Na pale northeastern. Then together with this we have 0.4 million Pia Kenyans. Pia tuko na wa nukta tatu ya wa milioni ya wa Kenya. These are the people Kenyans who are abusing bangi. Ah ni wa Kenya ambao wanatumia bangi. So for you and me to help our children. Ili wewe na mimi tuweze kuwasaidia watoto wetu. To help our relatives outside there. Ama tuwasaidie chemeji zetu huko nje. What are the signs and symptoms that can tell you your child, your brother, your sister is abusing these substances? Ni ishara gani inaweza kuonyesha kwamba huyu mtu anatumia haya madawa? One. Ya kwanza forgetfulness ni kusahau declining in grades if the child is in school ama mwanafunzi kama ko shuleni hali yake inapungua aggressiveness and irritability ana mtu ambaye anaonekana kuna bugdha sana if the child was okay and all of a sudden starts being irritable and aggressive ama kama mtoto alikuwa mpole na ameanza kuwa mwenye bugdha sana change, change in mood on behavior ama hali yake ya kuhisi ama kitabia inabadilika disappearing of valuables at home ama vitu za dhamana zinaanza kukosekana nyumbani feeling hopelessness and depressed na mtu ana hisi kwa bahana mwelekeo and the sudden use of deodorants and the perfumes in the room na anaanza kutumia marashi tu pude tu pale nyumbani all these they are doing it so that they can prevent the other people in the house from getting their the smell of these drugs eh wanafanya yote na ili watu wengine nyumbani wasihisi harufu if you observe keenly you can also get injection marks if they are abusing things like cocaine things like heroin na kama utamakinika sana utaona saa zingine labda wamejidunga then there will also be deterioration gross deterioration in hygiene na saa zingine labda utaona hali yao ya usafi imedidimia so if you observe these things in a person kwa hivyo ukiona haya mambo katika maisha ya mtu again kindly refer accordingly kwa hivyo pia unaweza muelekeza vizuri send a signal to somebody because this will affect the child or somebody's mental health kwa sababu hii inaweza athiri mawazo ya mtu ya mtoto wa mtu so it can lead to mental illness or it can lead to suicide. Na hali hii inaweza elekea maradhi ya mawazo ama hata kujinyonga. So kindly allow me to call a living testimony. Kwa hivyo niruhusu niite mmoja ambaye ni shahidi. That is Paul. Ambaye kwa jina ni Paul. Paul was once abusing these substances. Paul wakati mmoja alikuwa anatumia haya madawa. Love for him as he comes. Pigie makofi anapokuja. He was diagnosed at Madhari Hospital. Na pale alipata matibabu pale Madhari Hospital. Was treated and went through rehabilitation process. Na akatibiwa na akaenda katika hali yake ya kurekebika. And today is a living testimony. Na leo sasa ni shahidi. That you can be a drug abuser today. Baba unaweza kuwa unatumia madawa leo. And by the grace of God tomorrow you can be so Paul welcome Paul share with the God's people shiriki na watu wa Mungu the leadership of this church a viongozi wa kanisa my mentor my, my mother na mkufunzi na mama yangu sister Agnes ana Agnes and fellow family members na watu wa jamii habari zenu my simple names are Paul Mathaga Anaitwa Paul kwa jina. More than that Christ is Lord over my soul. Zaidi ya yote Yesu ni Bwana. That has never been the story. Ah hiyo ijakuwa ndio hadithi. This is the story I want to share with you. Hii ndio hadithi nataka kushiriki. Born some 40 years ago. Nilizaliwa kama miaka 40 imepita. In a Christian family. Katika jamii. Ah uh, in a family of four. Katika jamii ya watu wanne. And the third born na mimi ni mtu wa tatu mtoto wa tatu boy in the family uh, tulikuwa vijana pale familia and very obedient na tulikuwa wenye kutii sana went through my my primary school secondary school nikaenda primary school pamoja na shule ya upili and i did well na nikafanya vizuri it was out time to get out into the world ilikuwa ni wakati wa kutoka kwenda katika dunia and uh, through the peer pressure na kupitia katika shinikizo la marafiki i got introduced to adventure nikaanza kutangulizwa katika hali ya kimaisha i started smoking cigarettes nikaanza kuvuta sigara that was not enough hiyo haikuwa ya mwisho i started smoking marijuana nikaanza kutumia mbangi 
Amen. I went into college. Uh, nikaenda pale katika taasisi. In through the college. Nikayapitia katika college. A uh, couple of times is when I was sent home. Ah uh, mara kadhaa nikafukuzwa nyumbani. Go and bring my parents. Nienda nilete wazazi. Because of the effects. Kwa sababu ya madhara. Of what I was using. Na ya yenye nilikuwa nakitumia. But in the setup of where I was uh, I went to college. Lakini mahali nilienda pale katika taasisi. There was a lot of freedom. Uh, kulikuwa na uhuru mwingi. This is where I want us to note this point. Na hapa ndio nataka tuangalie hivi. Freedom. Uhuru. Freedom of what you decide to do. Uhuru wa kutenda upendacho. Will always get back to you. Nitakurejea wewe mwenyewe. Whether you take the freedom to have fun. Au ki uhuru wako ukiwepelekea katika anasa. To experiment. Ama kwenda kujaribu mambo tofauti. It comes back to you with the consequences. Inakukujia kwako ikiwa na madhara mabaya. This did not stop there. Uh, I got introduced to heroin. Anikaenda kutumia madawa aina ya heroin. Those are three substances I was abusing uh, at a bare age of around 22 years old. Nilikuwa katika umri wa miaka 20 nikitumia madawa yale matatu. Uh, this had a psychological effect in me. Na ikakuwa na shida ya kimawazo ikaniadhiri kimawazo. I became dependent uh, to these substances. Na nikakuwa kwamba nimeingia sana katika yale madawa. God was faithful. Na Mungu alikuwa mwaminifu because of being brought up in a Christian family. Kwa sababu ya kulelewa katika jamii ya Kikristo. A praying mother. A mama ambaye alikuwa ananiombea and a dedicated father. Na baba ambaye alikuwa anajukumika kabisa. Stood in the gap. Walisimama katika pengo for all the children. Kwa sababu ya watoto wote. I cleared college. Nikamaliza taasisi yangu and God was faithful because I performed well. Na Mungu alikuwa mzuri maana nilifanya vyema. When I got out into the world again, I did not have any job wakati niingia tena katika dunia sikuwa na kazi and as you have heard from uh, uh, sister agnes na kama vyenye umesikia kutoka kwa dada agnes devised mechanisms of the family not knowing what i was doing uh, kujua uh, hali ya jamii kutojua ni nini watafanya this are rampant in our setups of how we we, we, we are staying hali hii imekuwa kwa wingi katika jamii tunazoishi walk around town ukipitia pale katika jiji most expensive perfumes au katika marashi ambao ni ya gharama sana are being sold in small bottles huwa ila marashi iko katika chupa dogo sana let's open our eyes parents wacha tufungue macho yetu wazazi i needed to support my way of, of, of the drug world nilitaka kuendelea katika hali yangu ya madawa and without a job na bila kazi i resorted into stealing nikaingilia katika wizi and i could do this from my house na nilikuwa nafanya hivi kutoka nyumbani i was staying with my parents nilikuwa nakaa na wazazi wangu get something that is of value unapata kitu cha dhamana and deposit at mia can't even mention the price unauza kwa bei tu rahisi sana just to sustain me in that ili niweze kuendelea katika madawa prayer works maombi yafanya kazi we brought me together wakanileta pamoja we prayed and they started talking to me about my my condition. Wakaniombea na wakaanza kuniongeresha kuhusu hali yangu. When we say God is love, wakati tunasema Mungu ni upendo. Truly God is love. Ni kweli Mungu ni upendo kwa hakika. And it starts in the first church. Na inaanza katika kanisa la kwanza. And that is a family setup. Abao ni jamii ya mafamilia. That is where I got my support. Hapo ndio nilipata msaada wangu. Took my two feet. Nikasimama kwa miguu miwili. Move forward. Nikaenda mbele collected my pieces na nikaba nikaunganisha sehemu zangu zote decided to become an impact for myself na nikaamua kuwa wa kuadhiri katika maisha i got a job nikapata kazi but the habit did not leave me lakini ile tabia haikuniondokea because in my life katika maisha yangu and allow me to use this phrase na so that you may be able to understand nili niweze kuelewa i forgot about the bbi nikasahau kuhusu bibi yake basic bible instructions uh, uh, ma, ma mawazo ya kimsingi ya uelekezi so when i got employment as a hotelier wakati nilipata kazi that is where all uh, happenings or happy things happen hapo ndio mambo yote yalianza kufanya kutendeka yet as a chef the lord tells me he's going to bless the works of my hand mimi kama mpishi mungu ananiambia kwamba tabariki kazi ya mikono yangu i have dedicated my, my myself into that ministry kwa ba nikajipeana katika huduma ile I found myself getting back nikajipata kwa ba narudi into my habits katika tabia zangu za kawaida with alcohol as a priority na pombe ikiwa dio ya kwanza and marijuana as an escape route na bangi ikiwa kama sehemu ya kupotelea I managed to convince a young beautiful lady 
nika nikaweza kumshawishi dada mmoja mrembo sana that i can bring the heavens down to her kwa sababu naweza leta mbigu toka juu kwake and this was in a state of delusionment na ilikuwa ni katika hali sijui ni sitafahamu she agreed to my advances na akanikubali and we decided to cohabitate with her na tukaamua kuishi pamoja god is still faithful Mungu bado ni mwaminifu. I was blessed with my first daughter. Nikabarikiwa na binti yangu ya kwanza. 2002. Mwaka wa 2002. Under the influence bado katika ile hali of drugs and substance. Katika mambo ya madawa ni kwa promise was never kept. Lakini I was irresponsible. Lakini sikuwa na wajibika. Uh, out of that she decided to stand with me. Uh, katika, katika hiyo hali akaamua kusimama nami because God was faithful. Kwa sababu Mungu ni mwaminifu. She resorted to getting close to the earth with her knees. Akaamua kwenda kupiga magoti. And God heard her cries. Na Mungu akasikia maombi yake. The company I was working for, a kampuni ambayo nilikuwa nafanyia kazi, came to me. Wakanijia. They told me we, 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 we like what you do. Na tuwakaniambia tunapenda kitu ambacho unafanya, but we can see there is a problem. Lakini tunaona kuna shida. I did not take that seriously. Sikuchukulia ile kwa kumaanisha. Out of the delusionment of the substances I was using. Katika ile hali ya kutoelewa kwa kutumia zile madawa nilikuwa natumia. I resigned. Nikaacha kazi with a, a wife. Nikiwa na bibi and a four year old daughter. Na mtoto wa miaka 4. The sole breadwinner. And mimi mimi nilikuwa tu nawapa chakula peke yangu. I got back into my house. Nikarudi katika nyumba yangu to support my urge ili niweze kuendeleza hali yangu took the television set nikachukua tv to the market nikaenda nikaiuza drug spree nikaanza madawa tena i got the bicycle i bought for my daughter nikachukua baisikeli ya mtoto wangu drug spree nikaiuza i even went to the extent nikaenda pa ubali of where we were making sure we put money to take to church mahali tulikuwa tunaweka pesa za kupeleka kanisa nikazichukua into a drug spree nikaipeleka kwa madawa god's ways of working jia za mungu za kufanya kazi distance from heaven ni kama ubari wa binguni na hapa ulimwenguni and when he directs himself to you wakati anajielekeza kwako the spirit does not get away from you ni kwa baroho hakuodokei many people were praying about me watu wengi walikuwa wananiombea And at that particular moment my check from where I was working Na wakati huo hudi yangu mahali nilikuwa nafanya kazi for 8 years kwa miaka minane was processed ikatengenezwa I went to collect this money Nikaenda kuchukua zile pesa And God is always faithful Mungu ni mwaminifu I called my dear Nikamwita mpenzi wangu it was possible kumwonyesha kwamba inawezekana for me to bring the heavens down to her kwamba nitaweza leta mbingu zikuje kwake as that good guy we went with her i took my check and we went to the bank tukaenda naye nikachukua hudi yangu tukaelekea kwa benki it was quite a substantial amount of money ilikuwa ni pesa mingi kweli i can remember her looking straight into the eyes and telling me nikamkumbuka akiniangalia kwa macho akiniambia i'm afraid kwamba naogopa na hofia i didn't know what that was meaning at that particular moment sikuwa najua ina maanisha nini wakati we left the bank lakini pude tu tulitoka kwa benki i went back to the bank nikarudi kwa bank and i told them you had told me that you can give me some money in advance ni kwa bia mliniambia mnaweza nipatia pesa sasa just before the check matures mnaweza nipatia pesa kabla check yangu haijamachua and there is going to be an interest na kutakuwa na mazao juu yake need not worry about that do i need to sign anywhere mimi sijali hao mnataka ni saini mahali Yes. Nasema ndio. That's what I did. Nika sign. And I took quarter of a million. Nikachukua robo ya milioni. In cash. Ikiwa pesa taslimu into my pocket. Kwa mfuko. I wasted that money. Nikaharibu hiyo pesa yote. Went back to the bank. Nikarudi pale kwa bank. Asked for another money. Nikauliza pesa nyingine. Uh, God is always faithful. Mungu bado ni mwaminifu. The teller looked at me and told me. Yule msaidizi akaniangalia pale kwa bank akaniuliza You did not come here alone the first time you are depositing this check. Haukukuja peke yako ukileta hizi pesa wakati wa kwanza. Could we kindly? Je, unaweza? Have the lady who came in. Ukuja na yule dada ulikuja naye. It was a bit frustrating for me. Ilikuwa ya kususha moyo sana kwangu. God's ways are not man's way. Kwa bajia za Mungu si za binadamu. Praise God. Bwana asifiwe. We went there with my wife. Tukakutana pale na bibi yangu. Still in my cunning ways. Katika zile jia zangu tu. And our joint na kwa mahali tukutana naye i convinced her we get another quarter of a million nikamshaishi tuchukue robo nyingine ya milioni but this time around on condition lakini wakati huu kwa sharti 
that I only get 50 kwamba mimi nitachukua 50 and she keeps the 200 naye aweke zile 200 elfu i only needed money to sustain nilitaka tu pesa ya kujimundu my drug uh, condition and substance abuse hali yangu ya madawa uh, i decided to go and take heroin nikafikiria nienda nichukue heroin i took matatu nikachukua matatu from town kutoka pale town to mothaiga police station paka mothaiga police station in through Madhare Mental Hospital nikapitia pale Madhare Hospital into a small village called Nigeria kuna kijiji pale kinaitwa Nigeria where that is where the drugs were being sold Ma, mahali madawa zilikuwa zinauzwa i took my staff nikachukua vitu zangu i'm generous as we are aka kwa ukarimu jinsi tulivyo i was the king of that town mimi ndiye alikuwa mfalme wa hilo sehemu but on my way back kwa jia yangu nikirejea nyumbani coming back again through Madhare Mental Hospital nikipitia pale hospitali ya Madhare i saw the rehab center nikaona miracle center that was the turning point of my life hapo ndio nilibadilikia because as much as our prayer is committed to god uh, kama vile maombi yanaelekezwa no kwa mungu no matter the distance haijarishi ubali the spirit is anointed in you ni kwamba roho ako ndani mwako it will come to you praise god atakujilia wewe That's how I ended up meeting my sister. Adia uh, nikaenda nikakutana na dada yangu. Ah 3 minutes zimeisha. Dakika tatu zimeisha. But I don't want to tell you one thing. Nitakwambia kitu kimoja. It is doable. Kwamba inawezekana. It takes only one thing. Inachukua tu kitu kimoja. Love, upendo and the BBI. Na BBI. Let us start this in our family. Waacha tuanzie hapa kwa jamii. Embrace these people. Kwamba tuwakubatie hawa watu and let us not shun about talking about it. Na tusikose kuwanenea kuihusu. These are our brothers. Hawa ni ndugu zako. They are our sisters. Nao ni dada zetu. We are preparing the kingdom. Sisi tunatayarisha ufalme. And it will start from here. Na itaanza hapa. That is my time. Hiyo ni wakati wangu. That is my story. Na hiyo ni story yangu. It has been 12 great years. Na imekuwa ni miaka 12. With the favor and grace of god kwa neema na kibari cha mungu be blessed mungu awabariki thank you thank you very much god bless you god bless you mungu let's akubariki. give him a clown tumpigie makofi mungu akubariki thank you god bless you paul asante, asante mungu akubariki god bless you paul mungu akubariki paul there is a lot in mental health kuna mengi katika afya ya mawazo there is a lot i can do there is a lot you can do kuna mengi unaweza fanya kuna mengi naweza fanya let us help our people outside there acha tusaidie watu wetu pale nje The government has done it good. Uh, serikali imefanya vizuri. Health is now accessible by ensuring that you get an NHIF card. Kwamba afya inapatikana ukipata kadi ya NHIF. With an NHIF card Madhare Hospital you'll get all the services. Kapare Madhare Hospital utapata huduma zote ikiwa na ile kadi. Allow me to say this. Niruhusu nifanye niseme haya. We have very many private rehabs outside there. Tuna tuna mahali ya marekebisho ya watu binafsi nyingi and they are also very expensive. Uh, na hizo vituo ni zina gharama ya juu sana. Let's overcome stigma. Waacha tukubana na ile hali ya kukataliwa. We accept our real life. Ni kwamba sisi tumeweka maisha yetu ya uhalisi. We accept our condition. Ah, uh, kuna radhi tukubali hali zetu uhalisi. And move forward to see how you can change it. Na tuende mbele kuona vile tunaweza badilisha. Remember I'm a believer. Kumbuka we ni muumini. I believe in the word of God. Kana mimi naamini katika neno la Mungu. I also believe. Na pia naamini. Doctors are there because of God. Madaktari wako pale kwa sababu ya Mungu. Let's move do cons- Sortation, help our people help our brothers wacha, help our sisters wacha tuwasaidie dugu zetu marafiki zetu na dada zetu and where i'm saying we accept and overcome stigma na niko nini nasema kwamba tujikubali na tupambane na hali ya kukataliwa is because of the services i seen being of hand in madare hospital ni kwa sababu zile huduma naona zikipendwa pale madare hospital they offer holistic services huwa napatia na huduma kwa ujumla come to dental the services are there okay. come to antenental services are there Unapata huduma zote za meno na nini zote ziko pale. But the services are underutilized. Lakini zile huduma hazitumiki zote. Even rehabilitation, Madare Hospital is the only government rehabilitation center. Hata pale Madare ndio hospitali tu ya kipekee ya serikali ya kurekebisha. Again it is underutilized. Na pia haitumiki inavyostahili. Because it is not full to capacity. Kwa sababu haijajaa. Instead of people coming to utilize services. Badala ya watu kuja kupata zile huduma 
the house and they are going to private hospitals. And my people allow me to say this. Then drug properties they don't change. Lagactyl given in Madare Hospital is the same Lagactyl given at Nairobi Hospital. It is the same Lagactyl that will be given at Agakano Hospital. The only difference is for you to access Lagactyl in Nairobi Hospital it may cost you to sell your piece of land. For you to access services in Agakano Hospital it may cost you to sell your resources. But in Madare Hospital, you only need an NHIF card at 500 shillings per month and you continue getting the services. Also remember mental health is a long life condition. It is not like malaria that you'll be treated today and tomorrow you are out. You'll be on medication for some time. Just like depression, just like hypertension, and diabetes. So instead of going to these private hospitals, you sell your property at the end of exhausting everything is when your psychiatrist will tell you let us discuss something. I want to refer you to Madare Hospital. And when you come to Madare Hospital surprisingly the same psychiatrist who was treating you in a private hospital is the same psychiatrist are treating you at Madare Hospital. So my people People, let us save our literal resources that God has given us. Let us accept ourselves. We accept the reality. Utilize the services that government has put in place. Before I sit, there is one or two burning questions. Kindly. Swali. Is it clear? Is it clear? There is no question. Ah, uh, thank you, my sister. Mental health has a lot. We cannot exhaust everything in Andre. Afia ya mawazo hatuwezi angalia yote kwa siku moja. Sam is here. Paul is available. Yes, my sister. You can use this. Give her this. But here, here. Uh, hello. Uh, my question is, there are those who, who say that they take alcohol once in a while and they don't think they are addicted. Kuna wale wanachukua pombe si mara sana lakini wanasema oh hawajakuwa ameadhirika sana. What can you what can you do to such people because they are convinced they are not addicted but I still think they need help. Unaweza wafanyia nini? Wanasema wao hawajaadhirika sana lakini hizi bado wanahitaji msaada. Thank you. Asante. One. Kwanza. For a believer to take her call that is sin. Kwa mtu ambaye ni muumini kunywa pombe ni dhambi. Whether you take and drop Kama or you smell the bottle ama unanusia chupa that is sin. Hiyo ni dhambi. For those who are not believers, they say if you don't want to trend with the devil, don't visit its market. If you don't want to trade with the devil, don't visit it. And the little small small habits that we start, that is what it forms our character. Addiction does not start with the first bottle. But it continuously you take it today, tomorrow, you graduate from one bottle to the second bottle to the third bottle and then it becomes addiction. Which has been explained very well by Paul. But the conclusion of the matter is God is forever faithful. Even that one is abusing one bottle or two bottles, God can deliver such a person.
person. To come out of alcohol and also to experience the power of the cross. So it is doable, my sister. Bring such a person to the church. Let them know the truth and the truth will set them free. Truth comes, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Don't condemn them them, love them, and accept them, and bring them where they can be helped. Any other question? Yes, my mom. Uh, I have a brother our last born brother has, has been into drugs since I think uh, 2000. Alianza na Miraka graduate Tumbangi and then uh, akafanya vile poro alisema alipo kuja nyubani anachukua kila kitu na anauza. So my big brother kampiga akatoroka akaenda into the streets. So at one time we got him from the streets to come to the Madare. Akaka hapo for one month. Rakini, because he did not accept he has a problem, he never got into the rehab area. So we were told to come for him. So he lives in the streets of Nairobi. As those big chokoras. So people have been suggesting we get him uh, by force and take him to a rehab. Would that help or is it possible? Because uh, again, if somebody has not accepted they have a problem, uh, what can we do? Thank you for that, ma'am. Uh, what I can see is um, for an individual to, to benefit from rehabilitation services, the first thing is one needs to be aware of the problem. Second, after being aware, you must be willing to be helped. When you go to rehab, you'll be helped. Nevertheless, what we advise when it comes to such a situation. Get an NHIF card for the person. Because with an NHIF card, the government will cater for all the bills of the hospital. Instead of somebody staying in the streets outside, let them come to the hospital. As we continue with the treatment of the psychological part of it, we will continue talking to them the importance of the rehab. And once a psychotic part of it is treated, they will come to their senses and they willingly accept Tunguru to rehab after realizing that they have a problem and they need help. But the first thing is to get an HIF card then from there the family and all the workers to work as a team. Above them that knows God and knows the powers in him let us pray for our people. With God all things are possible. Remember God is not a respecter of any person. He can do it to your brother. He can do it to another person another person because he's not limited. And it is not the will of God for any man to lose his life. Let's read, let us realize the power in God. Anytime there are challenges in life, we run to him because the Bible tells us that the name of Jesus is a strong tower and the righteous run to and they are saved. God bless you, you can do you good.